and welcome, everyone. It is Friday night on Saving Throw, and that means it's time for Wild Cards. So join us, won't you, as Jebediah Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary continues to wind its way from settlement to settlement in the weird west and all of the dark and shadowy places in between. Or at least that's what normally happens. But for the past few episodes, our hapless carnies have been lost in the hunting grounds, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Welcome, all of you mysterious strangers out there in chat. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman, and I am the ringmaster of these proceedings. <clears throat> we are so very thrilled to have you here on the Friday night, just before Halloween, for those of you who celebrate. So we will call this All Hallows Eve Eve. Uh, so thank you for spending Eve. your All Hallows Eve Eve with us. Uh, we know that you have many different options for All Hallows Eve Eve, and we thank you for choosing wild cards. Um, on that note, not everyone did choose wild cards tonight. No, one of us is missing, but never fear. Never fear. We are. Wow. That was are... like a mean way to say that. I love it. <laughs> Garab knows what he did. Uh, but we, it doesn't matter. We are so, so fortunate tonight to have a, a very lovely guest taking Garab's place and joining us for some spooky All Hallows Eve Eve fun. Uh, we will get to the introductions now. Here is what I would like from everyone. And, uh, uh, don't worry about this so much, uh, TK. You get separate questions. So <laughs> we'll, we'll start off with you. We'll start off with you. So if you could let everyone know uh, who you are, um, where they can find you, and for now, just your character's name. Nothing else about your character. All right. No, no, that was just for TK to start. Oh, yeah, just we're for going TK. First. Oh, I, see, TK. I see. I thought TK was, yeah, never mind. I like that it says 40K on my captions. I'm like, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Let's play some Warhammer. Yeah, yeah I, a little I, think it, I, think, I think that my, my mild Kentucky twang is a little too, uh, <laughs> a little too sassy for this uh, webcast. <laughs> I don't know about this. Uh, it's me, TK. Uh, I am playing Theo, and that's all I'm allowed to tell you legally. Yes, yes, uh, really? legally, that is that is the extent of it. However, I would like to ask you one further thing. In the spirit yes. of All Hallows Eve Eve. Uh -huh, spirit, oh, what sorry. is aha? Uh -huh, what is your favorite Halloween memory from <gasps> your past? My favorite Halloween memory from my past. If I remember, any. oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so whenever, I, I only have like really good memories from like my childhood for Halloween, just because whenever I like reach puberty, I started getting strap throat every year on Halloween. Um, <laughs> hey. There was, there was one year in particular when I was a kid that my dad went like all out and we did like a pirate theme for our house for Halloween. And oh, cool. we had like a big, like, um, like a, a skull and crossbones with a little eye patch on it. And he got all of his Dungeons and Dragons dice and put it in like a jewel chest. And we took a bunch of gravel and we um, <laughs> we spray painted it up like silver and gold so that it looked like a uh, treasure. And we put it out on our, um, yeah, we put it out on our uh, uh, front porch for everybody to see and everything and uh foolishly left it out there overnight and all of it was stolen the next day they um, stole all your precious yeah. gravel yeah they stole our our, our <laughs> fancy uh. gravel and also all of my dad's dungeons and dragons dice oh that's a real yeah. loss but, but like and it was, it was a big chest yeah how cool it is that your dad had that much uh oh, dungeons and dragons dice oh yeah my my parents taught me how to read on dungeons and dragons so Wow, very, nice. <laughs> and uh, they had a watch party. They have their own guild in the Neverwinter MMORPG. So whenever uh, I started streaming, they would have watch parties with their guild for uh, money. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool grandparents. It's that's that's <laughs> very, story. very cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, all of you out there uh, on the other side of these computer monitors, I hope that we're all we're all giving it up big time for, for our guest who's joining us tonight. But... Mm -hmm. We have our, our other players here as well. You know, the ones you're used to. You see them week after week, but let's meet them anyways. Guys, I would like to know your name, your character's name, a one sentence description of your character, and then I would love to hear your favorite Halloween memories from the past, if Ooh. any. Who would like <laughs> to follow the stolen pirate treasure chest of, uh, of shiny rocks and math rocks? I will. All right. 
Hello, I am Megan Caves and I play Celestina Moldovanu. She's a witch who is out for revenge to terrify the bad people and help the people who aren't bad. Um, I think that is is very succinct way to describe Celestina. You all get it. Uh, (laughs) I will say that uh, honestly, I feel like my one of my favorite Halloween memories is probably the first year out here in Los Angeles that we went to uh, not Scary Farm. We went to um, Universal Horror Nights. We did like a handful of other things. I was like, this is the best thing ever because I've gotten to do like actually do this stuff since I couldn't go trick or treating anymore. I went trick or treating through freshman year of college. So uh, <clears throat> I liked Can't it. Can't confirm. That tracks. That tracks. Also, um, as a, a side note, um, my mother put out a scarecrow one year with all this clothes and a, a, a University of Oklahoma hat, and it got stolen at Halloween. So it's very random. Yeah, a lot of thefts going around at Halloween. <laughs> I, I didn't realize our yard decor was in such rude. high demand. It's, it's know, sad right? because like we gave away like king size candy. So it's like Ooh. everybody knows you gotta pay insurance on Halloween so that your house stays safe the rest of the year. And I guess those kids just didn't get it. Wow. They, didn't, they didn't get the memo. Either that or uh, they, they didn't care about the rules. The unspoken social contract was violated. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, uh, Megan, for sharing uh, that that uh, also uh, stolen Halloween story. Uh, who would like to go next? I'll go. Very well. Um, so to remind to remind you, I want your name, your character's name, one sentence description, and I guess the favorite time something got stolen from you on a Halloween past. Wait, you can't change the story now. I never okay. had things stolen on Halloween. I'm just going with the Are you move. Sure. I don't think so. Um, I bet if I thought long enough, I could make up a story. Um, uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Midas Buchanan, who is a, uh, a mad scientist toy maker with a uh, clockwork boy named Christopher that he is always working on. Uh, and that's, that's my description of him. And uh, my favorite Halloween memory, which... Um, uh, so back when I was in, I think, middle school, me and three friends went, uh, we did a group costume and we all wore monk robes and took um, wooden boards. And we were the monks that would chant and hit themselves in the face from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And we just Mm -hmm. like walked all through town, like doing the chant and just actually hitting ourselves in the face because we were middle schoolers. And, uh, you know, we took things very seriously in that. This explains so much. Oh yeah. (laughs) I don't remember much before that, honestly. (laughs) Nor after. (laughs) Um, I have to ask how frequently, cause I, I feel like I remember them doing that like every three or four steps in that, in that movie. Um, you had to do the chant. Right. You had to do P-A-S-U domine, thwomp, and then okay. which I'm sure we were saying wrong. It was just, I mean, you do the way. And I we mean, you might've been saying I mean, it right at first. Right. But you especially had to do it when you were like going up to and away from the, uh, <clears throat> candy givers. That's pretty intense. That's some dedication to uh, the the costume and the 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 world of the costume that I don't recall seeing very often in the trick or treaters that came to my house on Halloween we growing we up. Were quite funny. <laughs> I'm I'm sure you were for for those um for those <laughs> people who answered the door and got the joke. I'm sure I'm sure that they were very much into it. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for sharing that with us. Even though I'm a little disappointed, nothing got stolen in your story. Uh, that leaves <laughs> us that I remember. Last but not least, with... Hi, my name's Dom Zook, and I play Buster Buzz Callahan, the party bard. Um, and Party bard! My favorite Halloween memory... Um, one that I keep coming back to, honestly, is being like a middle schooler, maybe. And uh, at the elementary school, they had set up a large, like... I, I grew up on an island, so it was very small and uh, lots of just town type, you know, things for the kids so that we didn't have to go take the ferry and go off island. So they set up this whole thing in the gymnasium of like little haunted booths and stuff that you could go to. And uh, there was a little like laser tag 
uh, area and stuff, which I thought was super cool. But it was just really nice because it was fall and the leaves were changing and it was crisp and we were just like, you know, it just felt nice. It was like a very peaceful thing and we've never been that way since. So. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's sad, and now yeah. we're all sad. Um, you know what so was stolen? You. My childhood. That's what was stolen. Okay. All right. Fun. Okay, top that, everyone else. <laughs> Dom lost an entire childhood one Halloween. Wow. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that with us and for uh, completing <clears throat> the theme. Uh, JP was the combo breaker tonight, so as per usual, he will sit in the corner of shame. Um, that's why he's over there. <laughs> so again, to all of you who are filtering in, all of you mysterious strangers out there, welcome. We are Saving Throw, and we are an independent channel here on Saving Throw, which means we have no spooky distant uncle who's going to die and give us uh, an inheritance that we only earn if we spend the night in his haunted house. No, we have no uncles. We just have Dom. Um, and uh, that is... And he's in very good health. <laughs> so, and so not far, spooky at all despite our best efforts so uh what that means is if you are having a good time if you're enjoying what we do if you want to continue to support the show support the channel so that we can do more and better things in the future please do consider tipping during the show it means a lot to us it helps us keep our uh well right now our metaphorical lights on since the studio that we're paying rent on is currently unoccupied but one day one day we will return to that studio uh fingers crossed um and it, uh, it, it helps us a lot, it helps us keep going, but even if you can't tip or you simply don't want to, that is also fine. We are so thrilled to have you here. Please do consider spreading the word about the show. You can use the hashtag WildCardsRPG on your social media network of choice. The more mysterious strangers, the better, and the more mysterious and strange everything will get. As a fun side effect, all cash tips and bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers for this evening, which can have sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes catastrophic effects on the game or the campaign as a whole. To see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat and follow that link. And then as per usual, if you sub, resub or gift a sub in tonight's show, you can choose to award a curious ticket to either the players or to me, the ringmaster. These function as limited re-rolls and can go a very long way towards keeping everyone alive if it's the players or towards upping the challenge a bit if it's me. That's provided I have anything to roll dice for. That's never a guarantee in any given session, but you never know. And uh, held, over, held over from sub September, now that we're in Subtober, uh, almost the very end of Subtober, I will remind everyone, we have a sub goal. If we get 25 new people to sub to the channel tonight, we will unlock a Dom song. Dom, dom, song. dom, dom, dom. Uh, that's right. Uh, Dom Zook will, will learn a new cowboy song on his tiny guitar and thrill us with it next week, if that is unlocked this evening. Uh, otherwise, we won't make Dom learn things. Uh, it's, a, it's a very big strain on his head, and he did lose a childhood after all, so let's cut him some slack. Fact, nice. He's not allowed to learn anything if we don't get the... Uh... The <laughs> that, that's true, true. <laughs> um, that's true. for those of you who are in the savage worlds community as well you probably already know about this but this weekend is pinnacle's online free savage worlds Halloween uh convention and uh as a part of that they have seen fit to uh grant us some gift codes to uh hand out to folks that you can use at their online store to buy the savage worlds core rulebook or one of the many different cool settings like deadlands the weird west which we're playing in um tonight at the very end of the show, we will be awarding a $25 uh, coupon code that you can use in their store, which will get you quite a few cool things. But mm -hmm. here is the caveat. You do have to be in chat in order to win that prize. So for those of you East Coast or international, I know we are asking a lot of you. <laughs> do not try and stay up way past the point of reason just for your chance to win a coupon code. But if you do, know that we will respect you even more than we ever have before. Um, uh, also, I will say to enter that, just hit exclamation point enter. Just type that into chat and you oh, will automatically be entered. Neat. Oh, never, yeah, go ahead and do that. Exclamation point enter in the chat gonna, and you I'm are. Do that. No, but you, you do, do have you to be in win. chat to win, so. Yes. I'll be in chat. <laughs> Um, you, you can't let's, win. Let's, let's do a little a little shout out to some friends of the show here. Um, I mentioned that studio that we're not at currently, and boy, do I miss it. I mean, Zoom windows are fun, but not quite as much fun as sitting around our 
Carolina game table streamer game wow. table that we so desperately miss and haven't <laughs> seen in so long. But if you are in the market for a new gaming table uh, and a very fine, high quality one at that with many, many different customizable options, you can check out our friends at Carolina Game Tables. Do we have a chat command for them, Dom? Yes, exclamation point table, I believe, or tables. I can't remember. Wow. We are we are really dig both. digging deep for uh, for chat commands right now. If you want there to learn about table. tables, enter table. exclamation mark table in the chat and follow the link to check out our friends at Carolina Game Table. And also, I, I have to say, I'm very excited because my Jebediah Nightlinger miniature that I ordered from Hero Forge is uh, shipping and will be here soon. Not here tonight Ooh. so I can show you guys, but they do now have full color miniatures that you can order, fully customizable on their website. So Partially if you invisible. can't paint like me, uh, and you or you just don't want to, you can get it all done for you on their website. Definitely check it out, heroforge.com. Really, really cool options for any tabletop miniature you can pretty much imagine. Um, although, uh, test them on that, you know, imagine something really <laughs> crazy and then see if you can make it and then write to their, um, their customer support people if you cannot. And I'm sure that they will add more. <laughs> they options. do add new stuff like all the time. They, they definitely do. Yeah. do. <laughs> I'm constantly shocked at like the options. I'm like, oh, they do have that. It's a paralyzing amount of choices. Yeah. Now that we have talked about that, I think it's time for us to hand out some bennies to all of you <laughs> fine folks here at the table. So, uh, each of you are going to start play with three bennies. So I'm just gonna hand those through the screen to you now. Let's see, we got three for Celestina there. You can go ahead and have those. Oh, thank you, oh goodness. Uh, oh, we got three for Midas. There you go, Midas. Ooh. Hand oh, it that through, okay. Them. Uh, we got three for Theo, but don't worry, yours are invisible and I'm keeping track of them tonight. So I'm just gonna hand those through. They, they, they may be falling from the ceiling at some Thank point you. in the near future. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> and three more for Dom Buster Callahan. Oh, very oh, all right, dramatic wow. tonight. Whoa, Whoa magic. Near and dear to my heart is my mail-in ballot. <laughs> <laughs> And then as per usual, I also get one Benny for each of you. So one, two, three, four to start off for tonight's game. What do you say? Let's, let's head over to the document over here and see, oh, it looks like we have a, a fair few toasts that have come in from our oh, mysterious strangers in chat. So um, everyone raise your drink of choice Why if you I have one, or if you don't have one, raise your invisible glass. There's a lot of that going around tonight. Jack of Diamonds would like us to toast. Viewers beware, we're in for a scare. Can our heroes survive the attack of the evil Pumpkin Jack or will his lantern wave over their early graves? Can they fight off these frights on these scariest of nights? Be ready to scream, have a happy Halloween. Ooh. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Jack of Diamonds. Um, as per usual, Garav's not here, but we will remind you, you do get bonus points for rhyming. <laughs> from, but only from Garav. But only from Garav. So you'll get those retroactively Go when he him. returns. Bonus uh, points have no monetary value. <laughs> for We're spaghetti. prohibited. <laughs> Neva and Omar would like us to toast. We're just one kaiju away from 2020 apocalypse bingo. Oh. And argue with that, set them up <laughs> and knock them down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. RD Armand would like us to toast. Here's to a hopefully extra spoopy episode for Halloween. Set them up and knock them down. Uh, thank you very much for that, RD Armand. We'll see. <laughs> SF Giants 49er would like us to toast. Yeah, in Europe, we have daylight savings time a week earlier than the US. It's 3.51 a.m. at the moment. Oh, Let's no. see how much I can see before I fall asleep. Oh my. Set them up and knock them down. Thanks that very much, SF Giants 49er. That's assuming yes. you're still conscious. Thank you, and I like the uh, sunglasses on the toast emote that you put on, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> Fractured Avatar 13 would like us to toast. So I was watching a story about some heroic endeavors, TM, and I saw a circus troupe on a jaunt. I don't know. I don't know, know, I don't know what you're talking about there. Uh, it Could must be, be unrelated. Yeah. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Fractured Avatar 13. And Fractured Avatar 13 would like another toast. Come one, come all to Nightlingers. You never know where we're going to be. Neither do we. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Come on and knock them down. That's a pretty good it's, motto for the carnival. It's true. Vampire 54 would like us to toast. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, silver shamrock. Happy, happy full moon. It's on the right, or is it rise? Mm -hmm. Set them up and knock them down. I think I just cast a spell, but I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Oh, God. Don't make us cast spells. 
Vampire just make 54. us say Bloody Mary three times. Oh no! Like, what no! A, what a well, that's mean one. Trick. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Vampire Fifty Four would also like us to toast sweet treats, sweet treats, liars' nights, full moon, Jack nine. <laughs> Set him up sweet and treat, knock him man. down. Sweet I feel like treats. No. <laughs> we walked into the middle of a Halloween version of uh, my favorite things. Um, PSB Care. Oh boy, would like me to sing this one. Um, it's just a tug to the left and mm-hmm. then a shift to the right. Keep it over your mouth and your nose too, right? <laughs> but it's the itchy face oh, that it. drives you insane. <laughs> Keep your mask on, all right. <laughs> Keep your mask on, all right. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, BSB Care, for that very timely uh, reminder. Solid, mm-hmm. I like it. D Beachy One would like us to toast. Love the show. Oh, thank you. And knock them down. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much, D Beachy One. We appreciate one. that. Spooky Distant Dom would like us to toast. You must find my buried treasure left under my haunted mansion that you get to on my haunted boat. And it's all brought together by my haunted Gussie. <laughs> I'm guessing this is supposed to be spooky distant Uncle Dom. Set him up oh. and knock him down. Thank you very much, mm. spooky distant Uncle Dom. ETU Sir Cat would like us to toast. Gonna keep it simple tonight. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yeah. Mm. Set him up and knock Thank him down. You. Thank you, ETU Sir Cat. Happy Halloween. Bless you. you. I've drank so much. <laughs> We're almost yeah. done. We're almost done. We used to do this with alcohol. It was we bad. did. I, I still do this with alcohol. Okay, well. <laughs> Most of us used to do it with alcohol. Yeah. John Carpenter uh, would like us to toast. Oh man, I hope it's really him. <laughs> yeah. Personally, my favorite Halloween memory is when Dr. Loomis looks over the edge of the balcony and Michael is gone. Get out of here. <laughs> Set him up uh, and knock him down. Thanks very much, John Carpenter. Are you sure it's not something from John Carpenter's Vampires, though? I mean, I, I hear good things. All right, that is all of the wow. toasts, so we can rest yeah. our throats or livers for Ruby. a moment. But we do have uh, uh, some curious tickets to award as no well. Worries. Tipsy Flipper, left over from last week because we did not get a chance to get to it, would like to award a curious ticket to the players. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. R.D. Armand, however, would like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Not to be outdone, both Savage Clint and Sci-Fi Geek 47 would like to give a curious ticket each to the players. Yes! Thank you. However, Heart of Handprints would like to give two (gasps) curious tickets to me, the ringmaster. Thank you, thank you. Oh. But Peg Jody and ETU Sirket would each like to give a curious ticket to the players, keeping keeping the lead going strong. However, TK has joined the fray. Would like to give one to me, the <gasps> ringmaster. Oh no! So what? thank you very much for that, Betrayed. whoever you may be. Wow. <laughs> you really are sitting for Garab. This is appropriate. That's favorite. true. That's what yeah. Garab does Garab as well. Oh, <laughs> no, you got to kiss ass early and often. <laughs> all right, all right. It, I'll, I'll tell Liam. you, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Here. And Practical Puck would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. So thank you very much for that. A Practical Puck. Oh, we have also unlocked our first reward tier for the evening. So let's Yay. go ahead and deal with that because the mysterious strangers in chat know that after you see a good carnival show, it's important to tip your entertainers. As the carnies pass their hat, the mysterious strangers have put in one Benny for each of them in there. So that is one for Celestina, one for Midas, one for Theo, and one for Buster. And then of course, one for me, your humble (laughs) ringmaster. So thank you very much, mysterious strangers. Uh, I've got bottle caps with skulls on them that I'm using and they seem very Halloween-y. Thematic. And then just one reminder to everyone out there, if more toasts come in, we are now saving those for uh, right after our mid-show break. And then if there are any remaining at the end, we will do those at that point. We're just trying to stop interrupting the flow of the show as much so we can continue forward. But thank you very much already to everyone who has done that. And on that note, last week, the Mysterious Strangers in Chat unlocked, uh, what was it called? Hollow Resonance. And you were all given a gift from the Lady of the Grey before you left her court and climbed the stairs to get back home. How that will work. You all have an echo of the hollow note banging around inside of you. At one point in the future, any one of you can choose to activate it and debuff one person, uh, one enemy 
one die type down in every single skill or attribute that oh, they have. Oh, we debuff an ally? Just uh, for like I, shits and giggles? I suppose you could, no. but if you do that, know that Garav will shoot you. Um, <laughs> So things will stay normal. Yes, is this pretty normal. Only it'll each, be on purpose, not accident. Each of us have this or? As a group together. As a group, okay. Yes, okay. You, you have one use of the hollow note. That will remain until it is used. And then finally, before we get started, I would like to take a moment to let you all know that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA slash Canada TV 17 for uh, strong violence, strong language, and dark and disturbing horrific content. We do make every effort to keep things classy here on Wild Cards, but these are the, this is the weird West that we are traveling and these are savage worlds. So we hope with that out of the way, you will choose to join us as we ride this trail. And with that folks, I think it is time to saddle up. Hmm. Well. Last time, oh, very nice. Oh, I, I think uh, I, I shall join you in that. Last time on Wild Cards, the crew found their way to the Isle of the Emptiness, solved a mysterious murder mystery. It ended up being uh, the responsibility of a mysterious evil pumpkin-headed creature that spoke in rhyme and vanished as soon as it was caught. Having retrieved the hollow note and put to rest the brewing war between the court of the gray and the emptiness, they returned to the lady of the gray for their reward and were shown a golden staircase that they could climb to go back home. However, just as the group was about to ascend those stairs, the light changed. The glowing gold energy became a brilliant green and with a laugh, viney arms came out of the darkness above them and swept Victor off to places unknown and shoved the rest of our carnies into the glowing green portal, sending them tumbling through time, through space. Where is it that they will end up? Why, uh, that's an easy thing to answer. Let's catch up with them now. You are all screaming and tumbling through time and space. No, <laughs> fall for what feels like an eternity until eventually you hit the ground. Oof. Although it doesn't hurt in the way that you expected it might. And even so, uh, if you were feeling <clears throat> tired or wounded or anything from before, you feel uh, uh, largely okay now. Um, as so you mechanically, our wounds and fatigue are gone? Correct, correct, you got me, you got me there. Um, what would you all like to do? Where's Victor? What happened? Where Celestina, are the you pop your head up and start looking around for, for everyone. You see Buster and Midas kind of picking themselves up from the dusty ground. Um, you hear the bedraggled craw of your oh, sickly raven, uh, Vika, comes swooping down from the sky as she lands nearby and looks down on you. Vika, um, do you know where we are? Did you get a look? Town. Okay, sure. that's not very specific, but thank you. Uh, 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 Christopher, Christopher. Uh, uh. From behind you, you hear the familiar mechanical whirrings of your small clockwork boy and a tugging on your pants. I, oh. I'm Christopher. Okay, uh, good, good. I, I, I was worried that, that in the fall, you, you would have been uh, thrown in another direction and... <sighs> what, where's uh, Buzz? Buster? I'm, I'm here. I'm Victor. here. Victor, do, where's Victor? I haven't Victor? seen him. Do, does, does it look like Earth? <laughs> you all have found yourself uh, between two rough wooden buildings uh, with a dusty, dusty road underneath you, looking out into what looks like a main street on a uh, maybe an early afternoon day. It looks very much like uh, the world you are used to, although everything seems a little bit hazy uh, today. Perhaps it's uh, there's uh, a fire going on nearby or something like that. But uh, apart from that, you appear to be where it is that you wanted to be. Okay. okay. No sign uh, of Victor. That Maybe. Wasn't the way I intended to come, but. Uh, out of character. Did we, we, we saw him get grabbed, right? Uh, you saw him get flung off one direction as you all were shoved another, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he uh, might, uh, 
let's look around. Maybe he he fell a little bit further away from us. So uh, let's oh, just yes. Also, okay. maybe keep eyes open for Nightlinger. He could be here if this where we were going, right? If, if he's not here, it's it right. might be a little difficult to track him down. I, I, I'm not sure that there, there's any particular way to find the carnival consistently, but... I bet I can find Nightlinger if I tried really hard. I got Vika. So you all want to try and get your bearings and take a look around? Yeah. 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 All right, will you give me a notice roll, please? Be yes. happy to. Just a reminder, in Savage Worlds, you're looking for at least a four in most situations. A four is a success. Every four over that is a raise, which is an exceptional success. Guess what I got? What did you get? A five. A five. Yeah. Uh, the curse Guess of five what I got. continues. Is it also a five? It is also a five. Oh, my God. Uh oh I'm going to break that combo and get a three. Of course, you Boo. actually rolled a three and a two. <gasps> oh, which added together is five, but that's not how this that's works. That's not how Savage Worlds work. Uh, so Midas, you are a bit distracted trying to make sure Christopher is in proper working order. He he looks a little dusty and dinged up and you're just inspecting him and looking around, but you're more focused on him. However, Celestina and Buster, you kind of poke your heads out from the alleyway and see uh, what looks like a, a very uh, nondescript, small frontier town. Uh, you see people walking up and down the street, not throngs of people, but it seems to be a, a, a decently lively day, going in and out of a saloon and a hotel, uh, a general store, just going about their business as they, uh, as they walk up and down the streets and uh, live their normal, real world life from things that you pretty much remember from before. It mm. seems like you might actually be back. So terrain wise, it does it look deserty or, or uh, it looks, plain? It looks, it looks scrubby, um, scrubby, it, uh, scrubby and, and dirty. Um, you, you see a fair amount of people walking around with, uh, with soot on their face and the, uh, the heavy duty clothes that would indicate uh, possibly a mining outfit of sort in, in towns. It's a, it's a rough and tumble uh, looking crowd of, of people, but um, apart from that, it's just flat and sunny pretty much as far as you can tell. Okay, so uh, what we do, we go to saloon and we talk to people, find out where we are, see if Night Linger is nearby and find Victor. If we just go and yell Victor's name out in the street, is well, that, that weird? That uh, yeah, that'd be weird. That's okay. a weird. I, weird I think that the, the, the first plan of, of going to saloons and, and asking around though made I uh, sounded very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's see if we can find something like that around here, and and we can go from there. Okay. Also, keep eyes open for for newspaper, uh, anything that said date. I, I partially worried we end up in the time that uh, Winifred was from. I don't remember when. 1947 something. Okay. I mean, this looks like our time, but I don't but know what it looks trust... like in 1947. But so Can you trust us? This is my point. And we, we didn't uh, fall. We, we, we didn't exit at, at the point that we were supposed to exit from where we were going. So who knows if, if what we fell out of was the same time and place that, that we, were, we were trying to go. We, we, we don't know how much of a difference the, the small deviation could have made on our uh, eventual trajectory. Right. Yes. Uh, okay. I'll look for a newspaper then. Okay. Uh, okay. Give me a notice roll, Buster. <laughs> to keep an eye out for a, a paper or something with the date on it. While he does that, could I also send Vika out to just like kind of fly the town and looking for Victor and or anything else that could be beneficial? Uh, sure, yeah, give me a notice roll for Vika as well. Oh my goodness, I'm all wrapped up in my cable here. Okay, Vika, uh, what is your Four for note? Buster. Uh, so, Buster, you are walking down the street with your companions and keeping your eye out for a newspaper, an errant one perhaps left unattended that you could take a look at. Um, you don't see any of them, nor do you see anything that obviously has uh, the date uh, printed on it. However, you do notice one thing that uh, sticks out to you. You are used to walking into a new town, especially with your companions looking the way that they do and drawing strange looks, but no one seems to be paying any of you much mind at all. I got a 
Vika got a four. Vika got a four. So Vika takes wing with a uh, a sickly ah! and rises up into the sky and starts circling around. Uh, you you lose sight of her after a little while. Okay. So you all are heading towards uh, the saloon. Yes. You said no one looked at us strangely. Uh, that's what Buster noticed. Yes. Oh, okay. Weird. Okay. Hmm. Uh, all right. Do people look like? Us, though, like, they look like Western type. They, they do. They are they are wearing the, the familiar uh, homespun clothing uh, of the frontier. They, they okay. look very much like you remember people looking before your weird field trip through the hunting grounds. And speaking English? Uh, they, they, they seem to be. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you all have to pause for a moment as uh, a couple of women come walking down the street directly towards you. Uh, looking like they're heading straight for your group, though they're speaking to each other very earnestly, and you overhear a, a snippet of their conversation. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm just glad to hear that it's gonna be that it's gonna be pulling up stakes and leaving. It, you know, I heard that that uh, little Elizabeth from from uh, just up the road. She went into that house of mirrors and came out and hasn't said anything to anyone since then. And and my little my little one. He Hello? was just poking around in the tents and he swears he saw that creepy ringmaster just having a conversation with his uh, walking me, stick. Ma Hello? Ma I can't me. I cannot express to you how Sorry. pleased I am that You're they're rude. gonna be pulling up stakes and leaving tonight. Uh, I will be cast spell on you if you do not listen to us. Hello. Uh and they just walk right past you. What happened? Should they right. spell on them? They'd be well, very rude. I mean, it seems uh, like no one has paid any attention to us at all here. I, I, I would have to say, normally, uh, Christopher does tend to draw a little bit of attention, mostly because he's he's um, he's so uh, uh, adorable and likable. That's it. I yeah. don't think that's reason, but okay. Uh, wait, but he sounds like they're talking about night linger, yes? If we go find that, maybe they can just... They are not ignore us. If if anyone will be able to see us, it it, it will be Nightlinger. Well, do you think we invisible? Can I go over to Midas and just like try to push my hand through him? Yes. <laughs> um, you try and push your hand through Midas over and over again with the point of your finger multiple uh, times at different places on his torso. It seems to okay. bother him just as much as it normally does when you poke him like this. You're solid. Uh, this good, I guess. Okay. Uh, yes. This this was a uh, a good uh, experiment. Hypothesis. Disproven in this case. Yes. Um, okay. Well, let's maybe we should try the same thing with let's uh, continue with villagers. Oh, I like this idea. Let's go poke the locals. Yes. Well, yes. Let's, let's poke the locals. Buzz, no, you you disagree. <laughs> I mean, we can do that, but why don't we go to the saloon where we might overhear and something poke. in general, and then yes, if you want to poke, poke someone there, you can poke. To your this is appropriate, appropriate place for poking, yes. Mm. Yeah, so you, yeah. You, you see the building uh, that is clearly, uh, especially because of the, uh, the, the pleasant piano wafting out from the inside, the town saloon. And as you all uh, walk inside, um, you brace yourself, Buster, <laughs> uh, as the most normal looking member of the group uh, for everyone to look askance at the woman dressed in bird feathers and uh, and startling makeup and the uh, the man next to you with the little clockwork boy following at his heels. But as you walk through the door, uh, no one seems to pay you any mind whatsoever. Can I poke the nearest person? Uh, yes, yes, Celestina. If that is how you would like to introduce yourself to the fine people of this town, uh, you walk up to someone sitting at a table who pays you no mind as you approach, and you just poke them. Where are you wanting to poke them? Just like on the shoulder. You poke them right in the shoulder, or rather, you try to, but as you do, your finger just passes right oh. through their shoulder. Are we dead? Uh, did, did, did Midas, uh, Buzz, you see this, yes? The uh, dead? Is this dead? As I... that happens, Vika comes swooping in through the door of the saloon and lands on your shoulder, Celestina, her feathers more ruffled and, uh, and messed up than normal. Vika, what do you see? 
Can't go. What? Can't go. Can't? Can't? Is that what you're saying? Can't? Yes. Yes. You would understand Vika perfectly. That's just my horrific raven <laughs> accent. <laughs> what do you mean can't go? What does this mean? Can't go where? To Sky? Can't leave. Town? Yeah. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Okay. Uh. Uh, howdy, y'all. No one even flinches. No looks your way. No nothing. You All might right. as well be okay. completely quiet. I, I, I think that this calls for a, a little bit of, of, of further experimentation, as it were. So it seems that to each other, we are, um, we are uh, solid. We are a part of this world, but we, we can go right through, and he kind of waves his hand through a rando. Um, yeah, doing that it. rando gets a face full of hand, uh, just but waving right back and forth through his face. It seemed like when when Buzz opened the door to go in, into this saloon, he was able to, to interact with the door, yes? You're actually not quite sure that you remember that happening. Uh, you, you feel so, like that happened, but when you think back on it, you can't actually picture Buzz pushing the door open. And so these Midas, through walls? Midas goes over to a table and just kind of like slams his hand down on the table. Or you try to, but instead where your hand would meet resistance at the surface of the table, it goes straight through without making a single sound or movement. All okay, right. I try light table on fire, yes? We see. I mean, I, I think we've established that we cannot interact with anything here, but we might be able to still overhear someone maybe oh, talking about don't. more about Nightlinger and we might be able to pinpoint where that is. Well, I, okay. I, I also think that it's fair to say that this brings up a, a, a lot of big metaphysical questions about, about what we are doing here. I mean, we are still held down by gravity of some sort, and it seems like the ground is creating some sort of, <laughs> of stop it. Midas. Midas gets down on the we ground. We just came from Midas. hunting ground. Midas, there were people with, that were empty. They had just face and front. And now you, you, eh, it don't matter. Yes. No. Oh. As you're talking, Midas, Christopher starts tugging on your pants and just pushing his hand through a, a chair <laughs> right next to you. I'm Christopher. Oh, yes, Christopher. Christopher. Very well obser observed. See, now this, uh, that, that is, and Midas goes into his sack and pulls out a uh, a Christopher treat. And it's like, e yes, okay. very good, Christopher. Noticing things that are strange about the world around you is very good behavior. And you know, <laughs> he gives him if, one. If Which we is ever get out of here, he gonna poke people. You know this, right? Uh, well, if, in fact, it turns out that those people are e e ethereal, or perhaps what might be the case, we are ethereal, then I would very much want Christopher to poke them and, and know that that is the case or not. As this is happening, will each of you give me a notice roll, please? Yes. As Christopher creepily noms down on a chunk of unrefined ghost <gasps> rock known as a Christopher treat. Which, by the way, I, I I feel like I've pressed them into like little like shapes sometimes for fun. I have a okay. feeling Celestine and I did the same thing. <gasps> uh, did you, you both crit, crit fail? fail your yeah. notice roll? <laughs> you both got double ones, snake eyes. All right, it's all up to you, Midas. You better. I got five. <laughs> okay, well, of course you did. A five is good. You got five um, on it? So uh, as you all are standing there trying to get your bearings and figure out what's going on, you all have the sudden sensation of being watched. However, as soon as you feel that, Celestina and Buzz, you, you look around to see where the source of the sensation might be coming from. But as you do, that strange haze that seems to be hanging in the air is blown past you by a wind that you cannot hear or feel, but you feel it just stinging your eyes. And as your vision oh. begins to clear, you feel like there's just a film over your experience of the world around you. You will both suffer a minus one to all site-based notice Ooh. rolls for the rest of this session. Oh, Midas, you are not affected by any such thing, maybe because you were leaning down giving Christopher a Christopher treat. You too feel the sensation of being watched, and as you stand up, you look to the upstairs balcony of the saloon, and you see a figure looking down at the three of you and looking directly at you. Theo. Could you describe to us what that figure looks like, please? 
Hi there. Well, I'm Theo, and uh, I guess, I don't know. I don't know how old I was last I checked. I'm probably about 13. Uh, got nut brown skin, got like this curly red hair. Um, I I got this this um, black button down. My, my mama made it for me and some of the black slacks, uh, little suspenders. I look real dapper. It's what I, you know, was buried in. It was one of the nicest things I ever got. Gave me a little tie too. I look pretty good. So that is the figure you see looking down at all of you uh, from up there, looking directly at you, Midas. And as you look up, you make eye contact with this individual. Christopher, for, for the sake of experimentation, um, go poke that person. I'm Christopher. What? Christopher nods and just starts working his way up the stairs to the saloon, his unblinking large eyes locked onto the figure looking at you from the top of the stairs. Uh, Theo, you see what looks like a, a little boy, um, a small, you, you said you were 13? Yeah, I'm about 13. Yeah, at a least I think I am. A little bit <laughs> smaller than you. Um, but moving like a, a puppet from your nightmares as it walks up the stairs, its dead eyes looking directly at you and walking towards you. I'm Christopher, I'm <laughs> Christopher, I'm Christopher. And then it walks over and pokes you in the stomach. I'm gonna poke him back. Oh my God. <laughs> Christopher pokes this figure in the stomach and um, the, the individual looks down at Christopher and pokes pokes him in the stomach too. Uh, 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 everyone, everyone, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, Christopher, uh, that's, 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 that's enough. Uh, sh we, what? We have, what is it? We found someone we can interact with. Look, look. We did? Uh, hey, hello there, um, uh, 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 child. Uh, can, 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 can you, can you tell us where, where, where we are? Oh, this is boring already. Can I go back to what I was doing, actually? So, so Theo, uh, the, the strange man from downstairs calls up a question to you, and uh, you, you look at him for a moment, and then go back to what it was that you were doing, which was? I got a little rock in my hand, and I'm going to see whether or not I can knock the bottle out of, <laughs> out of the sheriff's hands. Okay, so the uh, the very sleepy elderly sheriff is sitting uh, half asleep at the at the end of the bar, nursing a bottle. And uh, Theo, you have a, a small rock in your hand. Can you make a spirit roll for me, please, Theo? Yeah, sure. I know what that is. <laughs> That's I believe your spirit is a D eight. Oh, it's so a D eight. Okay. Yes. So you're gonna roll a D eight, and All then right. your wild die, and you're gonna uh... keep the better. I actually, I have a plus one bonus to all spirit rolls to act with the, interact with the physical world. You do indeed. So go so, ahead and add a plus one to that. A D8 plus one. I'm gonna just do it in roll 20. You, you got it. I got a nine. That is a nine. That is a success with a raise. So Theo, you look down at it's the incredible. sheriff's bottle. You flip the rock up into the air once and with un airing aim you fire it off down over the heads of the crowd below in the saloon and it hits the sheriff's bottle which explodes in his hand <laughs> oh, oh. go to high five the kid <laughs> um christopher just sort of looks at your hand and then takes his finger and just pokes it into the middle of your palm good enough I'm christopher uh, I, 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 somebody broke my bottle which one of y'all broke this? I was I was finishing that, y'all. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. Hey, what just happened? Hey, child hey, up, uh, upstairs. What did you just do? Who, who, who are you? How you do this? Oh, she can see me too. Oh, yes, yeah. I have. Uh, my, my eyes feel weird, but I see you. Yeah, I think we can all see you, and you can see all of us. And, and, and you you seem to be able to, to interact with, with both us and th these people, so, yeah, which is not something that we can say we, we share the ability to do. Wait, you can't break a bottle if you want? Well, normally, yes, very easily. But currently, no. We just seem to piss through everything. Uh, I'm going I'm to go ahead and uh, pass through the railing and fly down. Okay. 
Um, so Theo just just moves directly through the rail the railing and slowly floats down from the upper platform. Absolutely showing off. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe doing a little bit of like a, a, a flip and a twist in the air oh, and landing. Absolutely. That, it's very about... Peter Pan. There we go. Oh, I dig that. Oh, um, landing you should in a... join Carnival. Just think. Uh, that was very oh. impressive. Uh, uh, my name's uh, Buzz. You you are? I'm Theo. Theo. It's, uh, yeah. it's nice to meet you, Theo. Uh, we seem to be new here. And uh, you seem to know uh, kind of what's going on. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about where we are? Uh, oh, uh, you're in Iron Spring. Iron oh. Spring. I'm going to take a seat on the bar and okay. just like dip my fingers in somebody else's drink and like splish it. Okay, so you hop up on the bar, uh, kicking your legs a little maybe as, as you do and uh, just start drawing lazy splishy circles in a puddle of uh, alcohol left to uh, mellow on the countertop. Yeah. Midas, Midas moves in and kind of like looks up close at the, at the finger going into the alcohol and it's just like, fascinating. Oh, it ain't nothing you can't do with a little practice. No, wait, wait, so uh, you're able to, to selectively interact with, with the things around us. Yeah, kinda. How do these work? How you do this? Wait, I don't talk? know. I guess I've never really thought about it before. It's kind of like how like we don't just sink through the ground because you just don't. I, I was just wondering that exact same thing actually yeah. as we were walking walking into here. And I can touch these things because I just can. But it takes a lot of time to just can. So we in Iron Spring Town, but uh, where are we that seems different than these people? What is this? Oh, you're know? probably dead. Dead? We're not supposed to be dead. We're just supposed <laughs> to come out of hunting ground. Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, of course, there's, there's, there's no way we could be dead because we, we never experienced death, right? I don't know if that's how that works, eh, my best, but uh, yeah, I don't disagree. Eh? If we're dead, is Victor dead? And where is Victor? Oh, well, I hope you're not dead because I wouldn't have wanted to be buried in that. Oh, I oh. like this. <laughs> no, yours oh, is fine. He's good. For oh, he it looks fell. like he's wearing my mama's apron. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. In my, this, in mama's apron. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is a tremendously practical piece of clothing. Yeah, yeah. she'd put all kinds of spoons and cookies in it. Yeah, I've, I've got wrenches and. And paintbrushes, and that's... Well, you can't eat those. And Christopher and treats. Can't be that perfect. <laughs> you can't eat those either, actually. Yeah. Well, Christopher can. We well, it seems like they've got your I'm spot. Christopher! Christopher yes, waves, Christopher, forgotten not. up at the top of the stairs, his duty completed. Uh, oh, that's... he can just walk through. Uh, actually, that that is a, a very yeah, good point. Yeah, just walk through. Uh, uh, Christopher, uh, well, if we were, in fact, dead, then uh, why would Christopher be here? Because he is he a... He little um, boy. Little well, he pieces. Is, he is a clockwork automaton and uh, has, therefore, uh, no soul. And contains 0% human child. We've been over this. <laughs> I Definitely don't know these anymore. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. These are a lot of questions. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry. Just, you know, we, uh, being new here, we're just uh, trying to get our bearings. No, nah, it's fine. And... You ain't never been dead before. It makes sense. No, no, I, I have not. It's a, quite a new sensation for me. Uh, yeah. Seems like you've had some experience here, though. I think, y yeah. Uh, oh, just a little you, bit. How you get here? You from this town and you died in town, I guess? Uh... Um, well, uh, probably. Is this a question? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I must be from here because I can't go anywhere else. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, well, uh, the bird here uh, was experiencing the same sort of thing. You she, right? she wasn't able to fly out and, uh. Oh. Uh. 
go! You just hear uh, the calling of a crow, though. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Don't love that. Oh, she great. Yeah, yeah she, she is very... Um, she doesn't look good. <laughs> if any bird ever had avian flu, it was definitely Vika. Have I, um, has, has Theo ever met a ghost animal? Um, probably not. I mean, I can't imagine that's super common, uh, especially not in a, a town like Iron Springs, where um, yeah. the animals uh, all either go directly to heaven or hell based on how, <laughs> how well they live their lives. I guess it makes sense. They all either go up or down. So what's this one doing here? This is my familiar, Vika. Oh. We good friends. She helped me. Familiar is. Um. Uh, uh, familiar is kind of like a, her best animal friend, in a way. Uh, Animals way better than people, I say. No offense. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. You Don't. haven't happened to hear about a carnival coming into this town, have you? Uh, Eo, uh, why don't you give me a common knowledge roll? Ooh, that's gonna be low. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe Ooh, that's gonna it's be a d4 a... minus one. Yeah, <laughs> but don't forget to roll your d6 as well. I'm sorry, yeah. You so, can... every time you make a roll, you get to roll the skill and also a d6 and then take the higher of the results. Oh, and I didn't the, know that. And That's the dice explodes. So if, if you roll the top on the dice, you get to pick it up and add it and roll it again. Oh, what a delight. Okay, let me yes. roll that and then roll my d6. Uh, roll a d6. Ooh. Uh, I guess I'm taking the three. Well, uh, you, you yeah. also rolled a four on the d4, so you can roll it again. Oh, incredible. And That's true. It. it does explode. Do I a d4 or d4 minus one? Uh, nope, it's, the minus one's already in there. Another Ooh. four. Uh, so it, it explodes again. Um, you, you know, you don't even have to keep rolling. That's already a success with a raise here. This is you not could the keep rolling. Roll 20 That's has ever been to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I work for them. <laughs> so, Theo. Um, you are you are sitting here listening to them ask you if there's a carnival in town, and that's such a hard thing to to figure out. I mean, you, you, what does that even mean, really? But you think for a moment, and you do feel like maybe people have been a bit more excited, and and maybe yeah. you've heard mention of some sort of traveling show, or maybe it was a carnival that had come to town. Was it a carnival? I think I saw maybe a flyer, but maybe not. I don't know. It's been a long time. Hmm. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, As you are all standing there, um, a, a man bursts through the doors of the saloon. A, a, a very large, barrel-chested man with a thick brown mustache. Oh, I stand out of the way, everybody. Orin is here, the fastest gun in the West. And everyone just starts groaning in the saloon. Orin, wait, how long is it going to be before you stop holding that darn carnival shooting gallery over our heads? Well, maybe until I get defeated at said shooting gallery, but seeing as the carnival's pulling up stakes tonight, it seems that I will remain the fastest gun. And shut up, Orin. Oh, you think this uh, night linger about to leave the second night, yes? Uh, it's pr probably the second night if they had a good first night. So uh, that means it's definitely the last night. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, well, we got to find oh, there him. there is a carnival. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Theo. Like... Yes. Oh, oh, Quite dear. so. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, did, if did you we have an idea names? of where that carnival might be situated in town that would that would be mighty helpful and uh i'd, I'd appreciate it oh uh i guess it can't be far it's not a big town right it's definitely not in town theo that you know without having to make a roll if a carnival was set up within the town then limits, i would have seen it you but definitely i can't would have seen that so theo <laughs> when you say that 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 you can't you can't leave what what exactly are the bounds of of what you can't leave. Wait, what do you mean? How far, how far you can go before you can't go further anymore in town? 
uh, I can go in town and through town and around town, but not out of town. Oh, Ivica, this same for you. Uh, can't go. Oh, okay. You see Carnival Vika. That's mm. interesting to me because. No. Oh, okay. He's not. Uh, so, but the question that I brings mean, to mind is. All the time. What? Not all the time. What? 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 Uh, oh! Don't knock over bears. What? He's um, my bear. Did a giant red bear just fall out of the sky? And uh, yeah. incredible. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Halloween, <laughs> everyone! <laughs> Drop Spooky. bears. Spooky. <laughs> so wait, uh, Theo, what? you you said. I'm sorry. Time out. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to stop you right there okay. because the mysterious strangers in chat have just unlocked a draw. Draw, 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 draw. draw. <laughs> that means. One of you at random is going to get a, a card from the official Savage Worlds Adventurer deck that could have a pretty major effect on the game. Let's see who it is. Oh, incredible. Ah, Midas. The <gasps> dice have selected you. So let me know when to, to stop riffling Sorry. through the deck. <laughs> Usually that's how it works. It depends the on dice. the card. I'm very, I'm nervous about Stop. this. I'm learning so much about your culture and community tonight. Oh, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> you're getting a crash course in it. Yes, so I'm I'll scared. tell you that these, these are, are sometimes impactful, but uh, one of the last ones we did actually created this entire storyline. So I feel like I could perish at any moment. I'm so scared. <laughs> but you've already died once. So, I mean, what's the worst that could happen, Theo? Uh, Midas, I you have so drawn strange. riled up. Your hero oh, causes plus two damage for each wound he has in this encounter. Wounds Ooh. count whether they were suffered previously or after this card is played. So, oh. should you get into any combative Please type situation tonight? Yeah, do not punch Theo. That would I'm be rude. Just a baby bull. <laughs> Where's Victor when you need bird. him, right? He could give me some wounds. There you go. What a little lie. So, I'm My sorry. Uh, time in. You were saying, Midas, now that you have your card. Nice. Um... Theo, you said not, not all the time. So are, are, are there times that you can you can leave town or? or what? Are, are, are there times that you, you can leave town where, 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 where the, the boundaries of, of where you are allowed to, to exit shift? You can see Theo's like attention is very much wandering now. And Theo's kind of like, has like scooted along the bar past the puddle and is like got their hand on the rim of a drink that somebody has neglected on the side and is just like sitting and talking to someone else and they're just like what'd you say bloop hey uh hey theo so, would... give me a spirit roll theo let's see let's see how that to. works don't forget to add a plus one. Oh, don't forget to add a plus one okay uh slash r i just want to destroy everyone's life I was, <laughs> I was told that i was allowed to and i'm gonna do it so plus far one. you're at least destroying everyone's drinks okay i've got seven <laughs> and then roll your d6 as well which oh, is your wild I... day i'm not gonna get higher than a <laughs> you might it could you explode might. oh i got a just six like that. so roll Yay. it again Oh no. <laughs> it is a seven. Okay. Uh, although with a plus one, it's actually an eight, which is a success oh, nice. with a raise. So what did you want to happen to the drink, uh, Thea? I just wanted to fall over. Okay. So um, preferably just, into their lap. You just meant to push it forward uh, so that it would spill into this patron's lap. But uh, maybe subconsciously you were feeling a desire to show off in front of the new ghosts uh, and you end up putting a little extra oomph into it. So not only does it just tip over, it goes sliding across the bar and the whole flagon ends up plopping into someone's lap. What the hell? What What? You, what happened there? Just, and he turns to the, the man sitting next to him. Steven, did you just knock my drink over into my lap? Are you still cross? about that Esmeralda girl? And I, Steven I, just I, turns I, to him and says, I, Daniel, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Why would you bring up Esmeralda after all this time? All right, I, uh, Steven, you're not outside right now. Clearly we got oh. some things we got to work out. 
and they they get up and puffing their chests at each other, just keep their eyes on each other as they walk out the front of the Iron Spring Saloon. Mm. Did you see that? Wasn't that funny? Mm. Nobody could ever see it when I do stuff like that. Yeah, no, that was that was uh, that was so good. That was really good. Yeah, and uh, probably our cue to go outside too and uh, see what what happens with this fight and maybe uh, walk it? down the street a little bit. Um, and f- figure out exactly where the boundaries of the town are. Yeah. I'm interested it, to find out if they follow the legal lines of town or, or if it's more of a, 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 a spiritual line that, that somehow stops people. F- and Myas kind of mumbles to himself as he like walks out the door. Do I, do I know what time it is real quick? Daytime? Um, so uh, time kind of slips away from you sometimes, Theo, but, but looking outside, the, the sunlight would indicate that it's maybe two or three in the afternoon. It's, right, it's, it's definitely daytime, still pretty okay. daytime. Yeah, we could we could probably test it. I mean, I think it's one of those things where it's like, you're either in town or you're out of town. Okay. Yes, All let's right. test this, yes. Okay, so you all uh, get up and leave the saloon? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, you walk outside, um, and this time, since you are paying attention to it, you notice that the door does not swing open uh, to uh, admit your body, and you just simply pass right through it. And what I can only describe as a sensation worse than putting on wet socks. Um, oh. And you walk out into the street and see Stephen and Daniel engaged in a, a, a round of uh, intense fisticuffs I, in the I, middle I, of the street, I, I, while a couple of people egg them on and one disinterested uh, man with a deputy badge on just keeps going, no, stop, come on, stop it. This yeah. very bad uh, deputy, very bad. Well, it's not his fault. Not a lot happens around here, I don't think. Oh, well, okay. So what are you all looking for out here? Uh, which, uh, I think Celestina would look kind of both directions and try to see which direction looks closer to a potential end of town, if, if it can be seen. Okay, um, so you look both ways uh, down the main street, which like so many small frontier towns is the primary uh, building area of this place. Down to uh, to your left, uh, heading out of town, uh, we'll say to the north, uh, I'll assign some random geographic directions. You see the main roads curves uh, around just outside of town and there appears to be a little bit of a rise in the land. Just over uh, the ridge that direction, you catch a glimpse of what appears to be a, 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 just the corner of a wrought iron fence. Um, but that's all you can really see down that way. The other way, uh, much much the same, the land kind of gently curves up and down uh, in, in sloping hills that direction, and the road just sort of winds its way out of sight into the, uh, into the landscape. Oh, okay. It seems like maybe we could go either way. Do you want to pick one? We go right? Yes? Where do sure. we think Nightlinger would set up? Well, I don't know, don't have clear picture of town, but he, he usually set up somewhere nearby, but not so close that you always have people wandering over, but close enough for people to get there if they want to. You know, you know how things, you've been here a long time, my dress. Why you ask this question? Well, uh, I, I'm just, I, I don't know, let, let, let's go that way, right? She's got yes. you there, Midas. <laughs> um, so, so which way is that way? Is that towards the little bit of the corner of the wrought iron fence or the other direction? I said the other direction, I think. The other direction, um, which suits you just fine, Theo, as you turn and head away from uh, that direction and towards the southern end of town. And as you walk down the street, you, you pass a, a fair number of people just walking back and forth, going into the establishments. Of course, none of them paying you any mind whatsoever. And as you reach the edge of uh, the main street, just past the end of the buildings, you suddenly just stop. You don't feel a wall. and There's nothing physically blocking you, but you just can't seem to make yourself move any further you just stop well we're here uh-huh this is uh, kind of what you the sensation that you get when you kind of hit the end of the road as it were yeah 
Mm. It's kind of like when I was real little and my mama used to tie like this leash on the back of me. You were a precocious child, weren't you? Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> did, yes. This is my question. If you can uh, try hard enough to push over bottles and normally hand goes through it, why can't mm -hmm. you we try hard enough to push through edge of thumb? How different? I think the difference is, is that like in the first one, I'm on the outside of the bottle, but here it feels like I'm on the inside. Hmm. Does oh, that make sense? Yes. Of makes sense to me. So. Yes. <laughs> Midas is going to go right up to the edge of where he feels like he can go through and take, just pull like a, a match or a bit of wire or something out of his, like a little, just a thing. A match Actually, you or know a bit of wire? What are you want to do with this? He grabs, a, ball. he grabs a Buchanan ball. Uh-oh. And he tosses it up a couple times. And then without throwing it, and without using it in his, uh, in his Buchanan, Buchanan, he overhand just throws it at the uh, edge of the wall. What okay. is this thing? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, basically. Are, should Theo ball. be afraid of it? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, Probably. actually, th these are lots of fun unless he fires them at you. Um, <laughs> so he pulls this this small little rubberish looking blue ball out of his pocket and kind of tosses it one time in his hand. And as he does, it luminesces just briefly up in the air. And then Midas takes it and throws it towards uh, with down all the road. his D4 strength. With <laughs> all your D4 strength. Uh, you toss it a, a, a fantastic 10 feet before it just sort of stops in the air and then falls after a moment of hesitation to the what, ground. What about Christopher? Can Christopher go walk through? Christopher He's runs great. over and picks up the Buchanan ball and swivels, uh, not his legs, just his torso around oh. and presents it to you. Oh. Me? So, no, I don't want question. Meat. Was the Buchanan ball like past where we could go at all? No, it didn't seem to be. Uh, th thank you, Christopher. Thank you. I'm Christopher. C Christopher, can, can you try walking further than that ball went? Christopher looks down at the ground where the ball was and then looks up at you and looks down the road. I'm Christopher? I just nod, yes. He swivels his torso back around and faces south and then just starts walking. After a couple steps, he stops, no longer making any forward progress, but continuing to go through the motions of walking as Christopher just walking. sort of stands walking in place without making any movement whatsoever. Uh, Theo loves this game. So Theo's <laughs> also gonna walk up and like push Christopher and like look over their shoulder at the rest of them. Like, see, nothing. I'm Christopher, Christopher says, as, as his face is being pushed further and further into an uh, invisible barrier of some uh, kind. Oh, oh. All right, uh, th th thank you, Theo. Um, uh, Cri Christopher, you can stop. Okay. All right, uh, so there what seems we to do be, sorry? Uh, what we do with this? This is upsetting. Don't want to be stuck in random town for the rest of my undead, I suppose. Well, if, if we can interact lightly with the, the world around us, and then maybe we can find some way to 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 communicate with with the the, the carnival. Yes. Uh, uh, Theo, is is there a way you can teach us to what? Like touch the things that are here, like you did with the the drink at the saloon and the rock that you threw. Uh, hmm. Teach you. I don't know. I'm not really sure how I figured it out. Hmm. Well, it seems kind of like magic, right? And uh, if magic, it's, it's all about the intention, right? And then it's about the belief and it's about the focus. So maybe if if I, uh, Celestina wants to go over and like uh, whatever's nearby, if there's like a, a post or, or even just reach down and see if she can grab some dirt off the ground. If I, if I focus, really hard and I, I calm my mind, I come into present moment and, and, and then I reach down and try and grab sand, dirt. 
Okay, so Celestina, as you are uh, visibly and vocally trying to get into your meditation mindset, you uh, <laughs> lean down and just try and scoop up a handful of dust from the street. Can you give me a spirit roll, please? Yeah. Yeah, I guess basically you just gotta want it. Four. A four is a success. So Celestina, you feel your hands starting to go through the road and then you focus intently on your hand and how solid it is and what you want it to do. And you feel very briefly bits of dirt sticking to your palm. And as you pull your hand up, you see a little mound of dirt just sitting in the palm of your hand oh. for just a moment before it collapses down to the ground and that felt difficult. Oh, that this hard. I did it though, I did it. You I, did I, it. I, I, right. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, wow, okay. she's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she is, yeah. Do you know she's Maybe. a princess? Uh, with with uh, uh, Celestina's newly found uh, uh, dirt picking up ability, uh, we could uh, perhaps uh, pick up dirt and spell out on the ground something like, uh, dear uh, Nightlinger, um, we have caught ourselves in what seems to be some sort of ethereal uh, state. And if you are one to find us here, then uh, it would it would behoove us for you to try try and and uh, I want to uh, stop you right uh, there. That just already sounds like a lot of letters, and yeah, it's yeah, going to take be, a really long time. That'd be an expensive telegram. I have que question, out of character question. Out of character question. Um, yes, the unicorn horn of out of character. <laughs> Could I? Would Would it be possible for Celestina to know anything about if this is like a different, like an astral plane, something like that through a cult? Fair question. Give me an occult roll. Okay. I got a five. A five is a success and an increasingly cursed number to roll on the dice. Um, so Celestina, you kind of cast back to um, all the bits and pieces of occult knowledge that you've picked up over your time with the carnival. Um, you know that there unquestionably is such a thing as ghosts. And this feels very much like what you know of a ghost's existence uh, to be, at least from your best guess. However, as you all have pointed out earlier, it doesn't make any sense to you that Christopher is also here and, and Vika, um, you would assume, would go just straight to hell um, when, when she died. Uh, so the fact that she's still here is strange. Something doesn't seem to add up, but this does seem to be working with the sort of rules of, of the ghostly dead. Oh, okay. I, I feel like this, uh, some sort of like, uh, uh, spiritual plane. Um, however, I don't know that we did since Christopher and Vika are also here. It's almost like we slipped into other space that is adjacent to normal space. My best guess, but I don't know what to do about it. So I don't Pretty know. good shot in the dark there, Celestina. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> the one thing I don't want to be is trapped in this space, and we still have to find Victor. So I, I'm not opposed to that idea, though, Midas. We might want to uh, shorten the uh, the wording of it a little bit. Uh, I don't know if there's that much dirt here in this town to uh, to write that out, but... But As maybe... you are saying this, Buster, you see suddenly Theo kind of double over just slightly in the street. And a moment after that, you feel a, 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 a just wave of surging energy that just sort of passes through you coming from the northern end of town. And it kind of staggers you back for just a moment. And in your head, you hear the lilting refrain of some sort of ethereal music before it fades away. Theo, you felt this earlier today when just before you saw these three fall uh, to the earth, you saw something else and you felt this at that point. I'm what? being very vague. That's why I was in the saloon, hoping it wasn't going to get me in there, but... What? What, what, what was, what was what? that? Uh, what? Oh, geez, thank you. Oh, did we all just hear that? What? Are you okay, Theo? 
Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, you just kind of doubled over there for a second, and then this wave kind of came over all of us. So, uh... uh Is that he, something that happens in this town? Theo, you in should... your... Oh, sorry. In your in your mind's eye, you remember seeing something else fall earlier yeah. today and, and feeling a, a similar sensation, a pull almost, a, a not unpleasant one, but but a powerful one. Yeah, but we don't go there. And even if we could go there, it's daytime. Go there. Or if we went there at night, but we don't go at night. Where go, do we go, not go? Go where? You're, uh, what are you, what are you um, talking about? Have y'all been to the saloon yet? Yes, we met yeah. you in saloon. <laughs> it's oh. like the only place we have been, actually. Yes. Oh, Is... uh, well, we got a good general store, and there's some... Uh, uh, you, uh, you hide something from us. No. Yes. No. Yes, it look like you do, though. Uh, no. What? It just little look like that, yes, though. Theo, uh... I, I know it's strange to have newcomers come into your town like this, especially ones that can see you and kind of interact with you, but we really need your help right now. And uh, if there's something else that you uh, you know about what's going on here, I, I'd surely appreciate it if you could tell us. All right, but we got a pinky swear that we're not going to go. Okay, yes, a pinky swear, not go wherever you say. He, he, yes, okay. Midas looks nervous as he sees this going on. Yeah, yes. you know how oh. intense a pinky swear is, Midas. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, we uh, definitely are, 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 are not, not, not going to go uh, where, wherever it is that, um, you 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 tell us about yes. There's a cemetery on the north side of town. Oh, it might be it. And I mean, t well, it's not part of town, but it's not technically not part of town. And we can go there, but not now. Why? Why can't go now? You can only go at night. Oh, you try go to go during the day. No. No. Whether Wait. during the day or night, Theo, you have never tried to go to the cemetery. No, we don't. I don't go there. Why is uh, this? What's wrong with it? Um, it's it's just you know it's uh um it's just too far. Um, you will not scared and, of and maybe. I ain't scared of anything. All right. So, cemetery is a fun adventure. Yeah? All right, but I think there's something that, like, that lives there. Oh, like another ghost. Yes? Uh, something we could interact with. Uh, I don't know. I've hmm. never, I've never seen it. Uh, is um... it giant pumpkin with arms? No, but that'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? I don't know. Maybe. You'd think it no, would. No, it's... <laughs> um, will don't... all of you give me a notice roll, please? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is I don't this know a anything about it. Roll? I just know that it's hungry. It is a site-based notice roll, uh, Buster mm -hmm. and Celestina. Curious ticket, please. You guys and your all right. crit fail. A curious all right. ticket to re-roll for Celestina. Ooh, I don't love that. Um, you can always spend a curious ticket to re-roll if you would do... like. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do I have one? Uh, you all have access to... <gasps> oh, uh, actually, it looks like currently you only have four remaining. <gasps> nice. Oh, no. You also uh, have your uh, four binnies that you can also re-roll things with. This is just a notice roll, so I'm not going to spend it. Yeah, uh, Theo, you're, you're just kind of taking in the sights. Already, your attention has kind of slipped uh, yeah. off of what was happening for at least a moment. Um, that's a four for Buster, a three for Celestina. A four for Midas. And a four for Midas. So as you're trying to talk to Theo and get information about what might lie outside of town and how to get there, 
Um, Celestina, you are completely focused on trying to get Theo to reveal the information that you so desperately want. Um, but Midas and Buster, you are facing the other direction and you see coming up, walking down the road from the south, a very familiar looking figure. The, uh, the confident and lean look of the carnival's resident five-star world-renowned chef, Raphael Leduc, comes striding down uh, the road and heads straight for the general store, uh, adjusting his finely groomed mustache as he goes. Oh, 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 oh Ralph, 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 Ralph. It's, it, 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 it's Leduc. What? Uh, there. Oh, Leduc. Hey. Uh, okay, okay, everyone focus, and we throw, uh, uh, oh, maybe we can go and touch him, yes? And while you're talking, he walks right past you and oh. into the general store. Oh, okay. Right. Into general store. Um, okay, let's start okay. writing. Let's, uh, everyone pick a word, uh, okay. and, and just start writing, uh, here in the ground if you can. Um, and okay. just be, Leduc, uh. uh help. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll start on behoove. I, I feel like behoove probably will work its way into the no. letter. Be somewhere. Behoove is a bit too long, Midas. Oh, uh, okay, I'm going to start no. writing Leduc. And write Leduc, I write help, you write the Midas. Just write your name. Let's uh, put uh, these things together. Yes. Okay, so while they are uh, getting ready to write uh, Midas, Leduc, help uh, <laughs> on, the, on the street, Theo, what are you doing? Uh, I was supervising at first, but now I don't know how. What was I doing? What was I doing? You don't have well, to do anything at all. You can just kind of enjoy your thoughts. Yeah. What was I doing? All right. So, will the rest of you who are trying to write words in the street give me a spirit roll, please? Yeah. Oh, I didn't roll right last time. Yes. Beast. Oh, oh, me get a too. Can I get a curious ticket? A curious ticket. Three remain. I got to 10. A 10 is a success with a raise. I got one of seven. my bennies. Okay, a seven is a success for Buster, and Midas is using a Benny to reroll. I got a four. A four is a success. So um, you were writing what, Celestina? Help. Help? Uh, you were writing uh, Midas, Midas, and you were writing Leduc, Buster? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you each kind of get down near each other on the ground and start focusing intently on your fingertip as you try and trace out letters in the dirt. But it is so difficult. You have all spent entire days setting up and breaking down the carnival operation and went to bed exhausted and slept the sleep of the dead. And this takes almost that much energy. As you all sit there, focusing, beads of sweat breaking out on your foreheads. After about a minute of effort, you are able to, Midas, scratch out the very shallow impression of an M. Uh, Buster, you're able to get an L kind of down on the ground, and you, Celestina, are able to get an H and an E, and then you just have to sit back for a moment and, oh. and rest. It is very tiring. Uh, okay. okay. We have e L H E M. Maybe uh, all right. I if hate we to be take a, a second. downer, but but uh, but I don't think this plan is going to work. Maybe. What do you mean you don't have flour? How can you not have flour? Okay. Uh, Leduc is right over there. Maybe if we are to make him think that there there is something going on uh, haunting this town or 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 or, or cre 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 creating something thing, something crazy, then he will r report to Nightlinger, and Nightlinger will, will have to come himself. And, and if anyone can see us, it's, it's Nightlinger. Nightlinger, you think come for ghost? If he thinks that there's something uh, haunted or, or magic. He's got to be very good for this. I think about it. Although he did go for that day. What was that weird thing we saw that he- Hey, uh, oh, hey Theo. You, yeah. you, you want to have some fun? Yeah. All right. Uh, come with me, and I'm going to go into the general store. Okay. Yeah, Theo's very excited. Okay, so we'll Buster, follow after them. You walk into the general store, and, and Theo comes and... excitedly right after you, uh, Midas and Celestina following uh, behind. And as you walk through the door, 
you see uh, Raphael just sort of leaning over the poor downtrodden looking shopkeep, uh, seemingly uh, in the midst of berating him. I just do not understand how you cannot have flour. You are a general store. And this is very important ingredient for many of the dishes that I make at the carnival. Now you understand, I am a, uh, a chef of no small renown and I am supposed to be doing tray pass and other things as we are traveling. This is very important that I get the flour for the crudite. This good point, yes. Um, I want to try to find the flour or anything, honestly, and I want to try and knock it off the shelf. Anything, anything like in front of him. Okay. And um, I'm going to so tell everyone, just, just try to like, you don't need to hurt him, but just try to, you know, drop things around him so that it's clear that there's something going on here. Right. Oh yeah. Yes. This is my favorite game. You know, knocking stuff over is a lot easier than picking stuff up. I have a question. Question. Can you try to uh, make like scent through? So maybe like. If a Leduc can smell a raven, like a Vika, might go, oh, a Vika, Celestina, maybe? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, the familiar smell of a raven. <laughs> it's worth a thought. Uh, Theo, you <laughs> have, uh, I, you, you maybe have never even tried to create a scent before, but uh, it, it seems like something you might be able to do. And that wouldn't be one of those like, really hard things that take it out of you. That seems like oh. that would be kind of like a an easy thing. So you feel like you could maybe do that. What it's about? really funny because like you say that, but Theo's also a 13 year old and the <laughs> idea that Theo has never secretly farted <laughs> just to see if somebody could Both smell it. <laughs> My immersion is destroyed. <laughs> That's very different than creating a new <laughs> scent. That's the old, you know, ghost pipe works. You can create that scent anytime you want to. Oh, uh, wait, hey, he, have you ever tried to appear in front of someone? Like he, here I am, he, you can see me. Uh, a manifestation um, of sorts. Yes. I, I think I have, but oh. maybe not. You maybe have done that a couple of times, Theo. You're, you're not sure, but if you have, you feel like you remember that it took a lot out of you uh, to try and do something that intense. It's okay. funny because you wouldn't think I'd get tired, but I get so tired. Oh. Hmm. I, what if oh, you, you all knock things off? I try to appear, yes? Yes, uh, but you know what? You know what is easy to make footprints. Oh, maybe if we put something on the ground, your little bird could step in it. This is Vika. Yes, you walk on ground. Uh, what right. about flour? Oh, they don't have flour. We, we know that. That's the one fact we know about this. Place. Maybe meal. I still just cannot get over how you yeah. do not have flour. How do the people <laughs> in this town make bread? What do they have? Uh, they have oh, all so. manner of things that are not flour. They or got meal. nails. They got uh, they got sugar. Um, they got uh, paint and fabric of different kinds. They got those little sweeps that you can buy for a penny that sit on the countertop that you miss a lot, Theo. Um, they have uh, all manner of things, basically everything you could think of that would be stocked at a frontier general store, less flour. Uh, I will knock sugar over. I will knock any sort of powdery uh, anything. All right, slow down there, Buster. Let's start with the sugar and see how you do. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so Buster, you see uh, what looks like a, uh, a small brown paper bag uh, of, of sugar over by a, an area of cooking and baking uh, ingredients. You move over to it, and can you give me a spirit roll, please? Uh, yeah, I got a four. A four is a success. So again, you focus as hard as you can on what you want to happen, just for your hand to knock over that bag. And as you reach out, you feel your fingertips grazing against the brown paper of it and you push as hard as you can and the bag tips forward just slightly and then with a plop falls to its side on top of the countertop and sugar starts streaming out of it. And both Leduc and the general store clerk stop and turn their head over to the left 
Oh, and now I see that you have sugar, but also very bad drafts. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Can can we stop this before all the sugar is okay, on? Keep the it up, keep it up. Maybe get Vika uh, into the sugar somehow. I'm start, Vika, you yeah. walking sugar. Uh, I just think hurt. Theo's starting to get distracted and is like, oh, yeah, we're messing with a guy. I want to blow in his ear. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Theo, can you give me a spirit roll at a plus one? And then you're trying to have Vika walk through uh, the sugar? Yeah, to leave footprints. Can you have Vika make a spirit oh, roll, please? Dang it. Yeah. Did you roll your wild die? Oh, I didn't. I keep There's forgetting still a about chance. it. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Roll it, it again. Is. You can roll it Incredible. again. Incredible. Uh, All right. well, that's with fine. your plus one, that is an eight, which is a success with a raise, Theo. So as all this is happening, you you see an opportunity for for a little bit of mischief and you sort of move your way over to the side of this tall, very stressed looking chef with a funny mustache. And you just stand up on your tiptoes and blow. Like, oh, you're going to wet William. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so you. Stick Incredible. your finger in your mouth and then just stick that wet finger right up into his like ear. It's like a stream of like ectoplasm. <laughs> oh, gross. Gross. Um, luckily, he can't see that. Um, you could, I mean, if you wanted to, you could cut one right now just to just to really rub it in. Um, that string of ectoplasm just sort of follows from your mouth to your fingertip before breaking midair as you plunge it into the man's ear and he straightens up with a start. Oh my goodness, what is... And he, he looks over at the general store clerk who's just sitting there like like aghast. What was this? What was this? Uh, Ken? That you just did. Did you just stick something foul inside my ear? What is oh, this? A moist All William. Right. Can I <laughs> try to appear? <laughs> Oh, did you make your spirit roll for Vika? <laughs> yes, that was four. Four. Okay. So, <laughs> um, Vika, meanwhile, f f squawks and flaps her wings and lands over on the sugar and starts kind of hopping around on the sugar. He's Little good, Vika. raven foot imprint imprints making their themselves visible in the the white mound. But unfortunately, uh, Leduc is somewhat distracted by the, I'm sorry, what was the, what was the official term for it? Moist, Moist William. William. Moist it's incredible because I was going to say a drippy bill, but that's way better. <laughs> oh, William. man. Way better. I don't know. I mean, between drippy bill and Moist William, I guess. One of them sounds a... inappropriate for yes, a 13 year -old. And I don't know which one. Regional differences. <laughs> drippy Bill oh, sounds well, like a town we'll drunk. Never know. <laughs> so yeah, Celest that's Drippy Bill. Celestina, you're going to try and appear. Yeah. All right. Um, where are you standing? I want to try to stand wherever Leduc is currently facing. Well, Leduc is currently uh, chastising the store clerk for giving him a moist William. Um, so I want to stand in the counter. You want to stand in the counter. Be okay. Wherever I can to. Hey, you can stand in the counter, uh, and if you show up, I imagine that would be very upsetting. So give right. me a spirit roll at a minus four, please. Uh, okay. Can I have a curious ticket? A, a curious ticket is spent to remain. So now we do not have flour. We have sugar on the ground. You are sticking wet fingers in my ear, and still you have the gall. Uh, you're spending a benny. Yes. As uh, he continues his to oh, <gasps> I aced it. Well done. Yes. Um, that is a seven. A seven, which is a success, one shy of a rage of a race. So as this is happening, uh, directly to the right of the general storekeep, uh, for just a moment, Celestina, you blip into existence and you can feel it. You can feel yourself kind of contained by the hard wood around your oh. waist of the countertop that you seem to be stuck inside of, but it happens for just a moment. And then you feel yourself almost being drawn back with a, with a pop that is audible to you. You take a level of fatigue, Ooh. Celestina, but as that happens, Leduc just stops and you see his eyes just sort of go wide and he, he stands back for a moment and looks at the storekeep and just seems to be breathing intently. Okay. Okay, so I am calming down. I am calming down. 
He's looking around the store, though, now a bit actively, and I am deciding that I will just browse your wares. I will just peruse. Uh, and he, he kind of nonchalantly starts walking around uh, the shop, making a big show of, of looking at the, uh, the items on the shelf. Oh, M this is a... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Minus. No, no, he can keep, he's listening. But oh, he's, going I, over, I, he's going over to whatever he's looking at and he's like, Heading his hands out, like being ready to like try and knock something over. Or something. Okay, so Midas, you're just sort of walking around with your hands out, following Leduc, and Leduc stops and, and looks at a big jar that seems to be filled with nails. Uh, these are nails in this large jar. This is why is this with the food items? This is curious. <laughs> this large jar of nails, very still, okay. just sitting. Midas is going to just try and take his hand and just go and just like try and hit the. The jar of nails. Um, give me a spirit roll, Midas. I also would like to imagine that Christopher is just following Midas, doing the exact same thing, like mannequin <laughs> to, <him>. like, <laughs> to like a lower jar on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you get, Midas? Oh, waste it. Woo! Okay, I got an eleven. As Leduc brings his nose almost up to touching the jar and keeps talking about this jar of nails, Midas, you reach out with a hand and, and barely even thinking about it, just feeling the desperation of your situation and your need, you reach out and just slam the jar and it shakes in its mounting on the shelf and Leduc snaps back. Yes, 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 I was testing uh, the nails to see if uh, they are solid, they seem good. Uh, and, and now he is looking around much more intently and you see him look over to the spilled sugar on the floor and you watch him clock the little bird footprints that now appear in it. Well, so, you know, I am here to purchase because as you know, uh, we have finished our stay, the carnival, and uh, we will be leaving this evening. Uh, we will be leaving this town this evening, um, but perhaps all of us maybe can, uh, some of us maybe will not leave. Perhaps some of us will stay and put down roots and perhaps buy property and pay local taxes. Uh, he, he's, he's looking what? around as, as though he's, he's continuing to stall for time. Wouldn't that be uh, terrible if we were to stay? Um, this would be awful if, we, if anyone were to stay who did not wish to stay in Iron Spring. Although, of course, Iron Spring is a, a great town, he says, looking over at the, the storekeep who is just sort of staring in, in confusion at him. But... Um, <laughs> Maybe, maybe I will go back to the carnival um, al al alone. And if you see any carnival friends in town, you tell them that uh, Raphael Le Duc was here and they should follow him to the carnival. So Midas is going to take out one of his little like tools, which are not his uh, ghost rock tools or whatever. And he's gonna see if he can just like ding on one of the jars. Okay, all right, um, so give me a spirit roll, Midas. Uh, I got a Yo, five. This is significantly less fun than Moist Williaming <laughs> someone, but it, it seems like they might be onto something here, although you're not sure what they're doing. You got a five? Yeah. A five is a success. Um, as he is saying, as he's saying, yes, I will leave alone, and if anyone else comes, you they will come to the carnival too, and you ding the the bell, uh, or, or you ding the, the jar <laughs> on the shelf, and. Leduc looks over. Oh yes, okay, then I will go alone and we shall all, I mean me, I shall go now back to the carnival and uh, we will discuss what to do with the flower situation. Uh, and then he turns on his heel and, and walks out the front door, but he seems to linger on the porch for a bit, making a big show of checking the sun and adjusting his shirt. What are you doing? Oh, all right, uh, let, 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 let's, let's try and communicate with him. How, how can we tell him that, that, that we can't leave succinctly? Question, can you possess a person? Do you know this, Theo? Theo, that is not something that you have been 
able to do. Uh, I don't know if you've tried to enter the body of someone else, but even if you did, probably the most that would happen would be a very unpleasant sort of sensation before you you kind of get out. It's real icky inside of people, real wet even, and stinky. Even just touching people kind of feels like someone sneezed in your hand, so. Oh, oh, oh yes, okay. Uh, well, should we try to... Uh... Plus, what if I went inside and then I pushed all their stuff outside? Oh, that yeah, would that be would, very upsetting. Would, mm, not good. It, yes. <laughs> Look, uh, Celestina, it, it, it looked like he saw you for a moment there. Yes. When you tried to manifest to him. Maybe we can do something similar. Okay, I don't know if I can. It took a lot of energy. <laughs> uh, maybe one of you could try. Yes? Could, uh, could I try, like, saying can't go? Like, I just oh, want to say the words it. can't go. You could definitely try. And and also, um, Theo, it, it seems like these people are, are real, real into whatever game it is they're playing. Um, if you were so inclined, since you are uh, a little more experienced in ghost ways than the rest of these folks, you could make a support role, For if sure. you would like, would be a role yeah, to try was, and help them succeed. <laughs> I was just about to ask if I can, like, do like a help action or whatever, you know, yeah. whatever means that I don't spend all my good rolls on <laughs> not gonna be the hey, just tables. Nothing I mean, but damp Williams. It's like <laughs> moist Williams. It's moist like Williams, I'm doing right. I'm doing yeah. all of this crap and they're just standing there like Theo, will you please stop fucking around and help? <laughs> <laughs> like what are you talking about? And I'm just like stop in yourself, stop in yourself. <laughs> So you yeah. can use any skill that you want to support uh -huh. someone as long as you can justify it. So if you I'd take like a look at your shooting, you'd like to use shooting. Okay. okay. <laughs> you no. can definitely do that. I would love to hear how. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. What do we do? We're, we're whispering to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, essentially what you're doing is, um, is supporting their attempt to. So whether that's trying to use persuasion to give them a little, a few tips, or if it's using intimidation to try and shake them up and uh, get them to do what you want or any other skill that you can imagine uh, trying to help Buster manifest a whisper. Uh, I'd like to use taunt. Taunt. Okay. Um, You're like, so come on. Like, I'm a kid and I can do this. Like, surely you can do that. <laughs> I love it. So as as Buster starts moving over towards the Duke, who's standing on the, the front porch and seems to be moving into position to whisper into his ear, you just you just totally undercut his uh, his belief in himself, which might just be the push that he needs. Can you give me a taunt roll, please, Theo? Yeah, my taunt is a D6. So you'll roll that with your wild die. A three plus a so four, a three, or a one. So you don't or have a them one. together. You just take either one. So that okay, would be so a so failure. So. But if you want to spend a curious ticket to re-roll, you can, or you can spend one of your bennies. Although uh, those, I'll, I'll spend one of my bennies. What does that do? Is um, that also so it, a re-roll? It is a re-roll, but they can also do more things. They're more valuable than the curious okay. tickets, but they, um, but yeah, you're running but I don't on curious tickets. That. I but don't they're an actual like in-game the, mechanic. Yeah, the curious tickets curious are, tickets. Uh, they're pooled, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll save the curious tickets for people who know how to use them, and I'll just use a Benny. <laughs> That's very kind of you. You may re-roll <laughs> both D6s. Thank you. What if I just use the button? And then a D6. A five so or a five. Fives. Two so fives, five. both of which are a success. So um, as as Buster moves into position, what do you, what do Why, you tell are you him really again? really going to let a kid show you up? I mean, come on. <laughs> Buster, you kind of look back over your shoulder and you, you feel a, a, a little bit like you have something to prove now in front of Theo. he was a grown-ass man. <laughs> so Buster, make a spirit roll and add a plus one for Theo's um, assistance. You're I bully kid. so many men. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dead kid. I don't know what freaking fracking a little. Um, wow, you really going to pick on the dead kid? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I uh, aced it you? on the eight. <gasps> well done. Uh, so you said I had a plus one? Uh, you do from Theo's assistant. Great. That's a 14. 14. Okay. Um, uh, Yell voice. <laughs> 
So you get right over next to Leduc and, and you put your, your, your face as close to his ear as you can. And you just try and whisper, uh, can't go, right? Uh, yes. Are you sure you don't want to stick your tongue in his ear? Mm. <laughs> just, just for a little bit at the end. Yeah. A little bit at the end, okay. Yeah. Um, you whisp you slimy try Sam. to whisper, can't go. <laughs> However, you you are so desperate to do this that you feel like this energy sort of welling up from the bottoms of your feet, moving up through your body. And then with a really rasping, pained sounding voice, you hear coming out of your mouth, can't go directly into Leduc's ear. And he just goes completely rigid and he looks directly over at you, looking directly into your eyes, Buster. Not quite, you can still see that his vision is focused at a point past you. Still, he looks right where you were and he says, I understand. Uh, wait here, I will, uh, I, I will uh, send um, a Mamalu or, or someone who is um, more versed in these things um, and maybe they too can get flour. And he just takes off uh, down the road and yes. uh, off to the south the way that he came from. Okay, we All did right, that. Good. Now we should find Victor, yes? We, we, he, he said to stay here. Uh, Victor couldn't be that far away, right? I don't know. I, he, I don't know. I mean, I, I saw him get flung away, but uh, I, I don't know if that means he's here or another town entirely. I mean, he could be, he could be miles away from us. Think about Theo. how many people Victor killed without us there. Yes, so many. Theo, have you ever had anyone else show up like this, other ghosts. Uh, no, it's it's been just me for as long as I can remember. Oh, is no one else in town day or? No, they just usually go straight up or straight down. Nobody, nobody sticks around. So why are you here then? Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> nice, nice. So what do you all want to do? Do you want to wait here for uh, someone to come back? Do you want to uh, try and look for Victor? Do you want to do something else entirely? What? Okay, I, what I think we've got a little bit of time before anyone comes back from the uh, from the carnival. What we can do is just do just do some rounds around the town here and just see if we can see Victor or signs of Victor or anything like that. And How you do that the flight thing you did before? Can you do that with speed? If we just fly through buildings, we can go around real fast. Uh, is, is my flight considered a... Um like a natural movement or essentially yes um okay. you you are basically able to fly at the same pace that you could move so you can do it slowly like as a walk or if you really wanted to you could put on a little extra speed and run but oh, you don't running. seem to move much <laughs> faster uh than anyone alive you can just move more directions yeah well i i mean i guess can y'all fly uh, i mean i'm sure you can like right I mean, yeah. if, if I have the proper implements, I could probably put something together, but... Might this be any ethereal plane place where we can't touch anything? I think you could probably fly without implements here. Yeah. Well, okay, this All is I'm how... saying is that I could definitely fly with implements if... Wait, why haven't we been flying then? Well, I don't, ha I don't have it. implements. I, 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 I don't know. What... We were uh -huh. just in a place where you could have wished anything into existence, and we got the SS Celestina. All right. Well, it it would have taken some time and thought, and and I don't picture. We could have flown line. over that whole huge weight. Okay, never mind. Uh, it is a good point. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it didn't pass. So, yeah. uh, do we want to stay together or uh, split up? You take that side. We take this side. Sort of thing. Well, I, I, I think maybe it would be best for uh, one of us to stay here and, and just make sure that we are we are here and ready uh, when Leduc and, and anyone else from the carnival returns. Okay. Christopher, stay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and Christopher? And Vika. Yes, Christopher and Vika stay. They're good friends. <laughs> All right, Vika. So I just want to uh, double check the plan. 
you guys are going to look around, but if someone shows up to try and communicate with you while you're gone, you have left <laughs> the automaton who can only say I'm Christopher and the bird who can caw yep. as your emissaries. <laughs> I, I'm just double checking. I'm not saying it's a bad sir. idea. I'm just oh, double right. checking. I think it might be best if I stay here with, with Christopher and Vika, just in case they come back. Oh, that way oh, I, can, I can fire off a, a, a Buchanan ball or, or, or something to let you know that, that they've come back. Well, if you stay here, I'll take Vika. She's good, good pair of eyes, you know. Okay. Uh, Theo, what are you wanting to do right now? Any of this nonsense or uh, something else? Do you want to help these guys? Yeah, I mean, this seems like a pretty good game. I mean, yeah, all I'm saying I, is we, we make to, as much noise. We got noise. to blow up some bottles. We got to yeah. knock over some stuff. We picked up some dirt. Um, <laughs> potentially got, I made got a, a gas scream. It's been a full day. I got day. to yell at a guy. Yeah. We've potentially yes. got a friend out there somewhere, and uh, maybe he's asleep. So if we can just like make as much noise as possible, that would uh, that would yeah. be great. Just uh, watch out for his guns. You don't want to be on the wrong side. Uh, 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 I guess we did. Or yeah. Not I dead. wonder if guns still shoot. Uh, you know what? I feel like I'm almost doing science now. Because I've I, never had other people to do this with. I, I like I the so way you're... questions now. Actually, um, Midas pulls from a uh, from a pocket on mm. his, his apron that he like never uses. His cult Is this a cookie maker. pocket? Oh. Uh, Peacemaker? Yes! You Midas have a gun? has a gun! <laughs> you've had a gun this whole time? <laughs> you've had a gun this whole time and you've not fired a divin... We almost died multiple times in hunting around. What do I do? And Midas, you have to give me that gun. You, you, what, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just good with a gun. Shoot something. Oh, all right, let's... My... Yeah, shoot something. Oh, not me, what are you doing? Me. Midas points at like... <laughs> Something on the ground. Buzz, Buzz will gently push it away from everyone. <laughs> no, and you gotta open your eyes when you shoot. Oh my gosh. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like number one, should, Modest. You should not have this. No. He opens his what eyes and he pulls his the spectacles? trigger. What's going on? Oh, right. <laughs> so you're, <laughs> you're pointing your gun at the ground and mm -hmm. just kind of like looking at it with one eye, you pull the trigger and there is a loud report as the gun goes off and you yeah. see the bullet just shoot through the ground and oh. you never see it again after that. Oh, do you think oh, it oh, might snap. hit someone all the way through ground? I suppose it's top eventually. That certainly you think, is a... Do you think it'll come out the other side in like China or something? Anything possible in here in the dead place. Is there Honestly, like a ghost casing? I, I very much wish there was a way to find out. The casings I, I'm having the same questions. 1800s <laughs> guns. <laughs> 1800 guns have casings. <laughs> I think Victor's gun has ghost oh, casings, yeah. but ghost we don't know where he is. It's just plink. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just look for little spectral casings. <laughs> All right. Well, it went through the ground, which I think brings up perhaps more questions than it answers, but certainly tells us a little bit more about this uh, entire sitting. See, maybe, okay. maybe but perhaps because the bullet does not have belief that it should stop at the ground. It, it travels I, I, I'm through gonna, it. So I'm going to let you think about this one on your own, Modest, yes. while we go. Yeah, how looking. does the gunpowder catch on fire? These That's good a fantastic point. question. Oh, no, don't ask Midas questions. You'll never get away. <laughs> He's bid. He's bid. No, Midas. Midas, <laughs> Midas, having been chastened by Celestina, kind of continues his, his rambling, but he sort of like talks to himself and like messes with the gun. He's like, well, I think it's a, it's a good thing for us to know if, we, if we're going to be stuck as ghosts for who knows how long. We'll... <laughs> and he, he sits down next to Christopher and starts messing with the bullets, waiting for the people to come. Okay, so okay, you're going to stay in the general store. <laughs> Near it. Um, and then uh, the rest of you are are heading out into the town to take a look around? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, Theo, are you going to stick with Midas in the general store or are you going to go out with Celestina and Buster? Oh no, he's got a gun. <laughs> and he doesn't know how to use it. And I don't know if I can get shot by a ghost gun. Uh, I actually have a D6 in shooting, everybody. So <laughs> All I'm right. better at that than being stealthy. <laughs> so 
as you all prepare to take a run around the town, I think now seems like as good a time as any for us to take a very quick bio break to attend to some very personal, deeply personal physical needs. Uh, but we will be back in just a few short minutes, folks. So don't go too far. There's more wild cards coming back right after these messages from probably us. Enter. Um, uh, Jamie, there's something wrong here. Yeah, this this doesn't look like the the Dat Network. I know this place. Oh. We we know this is Savings Row. I know. I was just saying it's not cold here. I was like, what's going on? Wait, how I'm sorry. did we get here? There seems to be a lot of snacks and hugs. Oh. This doesn't seem like the Dat Network. Oh. Can we stay here? I want snacks and hugs. Snacks and hugs are good. I I I mean, you're all welcome. Did we take Baba Yaga's portal to Saving Throw Show? <gasps> oh my god, we're in the hunting grounds. I, no, hold, this is hold very on. bad. We, oh, we need to get no. out of here. Oh, Can't oh. cross these over. <laughs> Jim! Jim, this is all your fault, isn't it? I don't have anything to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for uh, not leaving. And to those of you who did leave, um, we hope you have a great night. Uh, we just oh. got back from a, a, a quick break. So we're going to jump right back well, into well, all of hold, the ghostly. Hold up, hold up. Did we get hacked? Uh... Well, uh, sorry, I was in the bathroom. I, I missed, did you? Okay. There um, was this really weird time on Crits and Giggles over at Dragons and Things where, like, we were on saving throw, and... Wait, you I, were there. How were yeah. you there and here? I... Uh, well, she wasn't... She was in the bathroom after... She went after me. Magic! Um, <laughs> just have the one. Tom, you need to stop keeping the saving throw public password... The saving throw password on a public Google Doc. Yeah, that yeah. should really be not on our website. Oh, you mean HTTP... S colon backslash backslash Don't, don't, docs, don't docs, give them the link. Don't, don't, don't oh. say Stop it. Stop giving people the link, Dom. Yeah, you should actually probably remove me from that document. I've been there for a couple of weeks and oh. uh, I'm not really sure why because I oh. just yeah. agreed to do this gig earlier this week. So. A anybody who wow. has the link can see it. Yeah, it's I mean, open if you, share settings on. If you don't Incredible. opt out specifically, I think you're already by default part of that document. So yeah. we should mm -hmm. probably change those You should those take settings. it out of your Twitter bio. Mm -hmm. I should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That'll fix it. That'll fix okay. it. And then okay. we won't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah. Well, um, we, we'll get back. We'll get back to them. Don't worry. Don't worry. But before, before we jump back in, we have one more toast oh. uh, from Yanto7. Oh, okay. More songs tonight. Great. Um, Yanto7 <laughs> would like us to toast. I was looking at the Twitch late one night <laughs> when my eyes beheld an awesome sight for the players on the Zoom began to roll and suddenly, to my surprise, they rolled a five. They oh, rolled yeah. the number five and another five. <laughs> they rolled many more fives. The number five. It's so the number five. Set them up and the knock five. them down. Thank you very much, Yanta7. Uh, and it is a lot they of five. A five. They rolled the number five. I like that. <laughs> Wow. Also, uh, a couple more points, or uh, not, no, a couple more curious yeah. tickets to award. No Jay Matthews, 85, would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. <gasps> Thank you very much. Um, however, Sarah BC1 and Scott Denuso would each like to give a curious ticket to the players Woo! going into Hi. the player pool there. But Hi, Rue, works, <laughs> Rue Works would like to give one curious ticket to me. So thank you. The cosmic balance remains. Uh, feels like you're just rubbing it in at this point. I mean, yeah. I, I barely even that. used any, so uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it. What am I going to do with rerolls? Having said that, let's jump back in to where we were. Uh, Midas was going to remain at the general store with Christopher and Vika, I believe, or at least nearby, just in case someone came looking, while Celestina, Theo, and Buster were going no. to take... No, Vika's no. coming with me now. I'm sorry, Vika's going with Celestina, so just Christopher with Minus. Uh, the rest of you are going to take a look around the town and see if you can find uh, any sign of Victor. Honestly, Midas is probably glad you're taking Vika because whenever <laughs> Vika is just hanging out with Midas, Vika just like pecks Midas over and over mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. She do this. 
which is fun, but only when there's an audience to see it. Um, so <laughs> Midas, you kind of set up near the general store and you can hear the store clerk uh, bustling around inside, trying to pick up the sugar and clean up the mess and just grumbling to himself, tell me we're out of flour. I, I know we're out of flour. I'm back ordered on the flour. Everybody wants flour and that's my fault that the wagons are slow. Um, it seems like you're, you're in uh, for a little bit of this. Um, Theo, Buster, and Celestina, where would you like to go? Uh, we go same direction or we split up? What do you think? Um, I don't think ask me, I'm just the narrator. <laughs> feel like we should stay together because y'all don't know where you're going. Oh, this true. Okay, yeah. yes. Uh, which direction should we go, Theo? You know place. Theo is like desperately trying to think of places that aren't north. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the thing is, is that we were already at the most south of town. Oh, true. So the only so we way go we north. can go is north. Yes. Uh, we go this way then, yes. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah. know, we're going to just uh, check things out. Go through a few of the houses, mm -hmm. see what we can find. Uh, you know, Ooh, maybe go head houses. up to the... Oh, I love that. That's one of my favorite oh. games. Yeah, I thought oh. you might like that. All right. Um, so will the three of you please give me a notice roll? Heck yeah. Heck I, yeah. I'm i ready to be bad at this. Let's see my... Oof. Ooh, I aced it on both dice. This, uh, this is a site-based notice roll as well, Buster and Celestina. So oh, man. You, and uh, and Theo gets a minus one for having the clueless hindrance. So everyone gets a minus one. Yay. I got oh, it. Do I, do I do my wild dice too? Yes, yep. absolutely. Okay. All right, I got two fives. Uh, it actually looks like you rolled a six on that first die, so you would get to roll it again because it. I aced. thought a minus one makes it a five. Uh, that would make the total result a five, but if you roll the oh, six on the die, it, it explodes. Six. Okay, so I'll roll, do the the one again. All right. So, okay. uh So I guess a nine or an a eight. An eight, a success with a raise. So Theo gets an eight. Uh, Celestina, what did you get? An also eight. an eight and a four for Buster. Sorry, Buster. I rolled a um, five. So, uh, Buster, Theo just kind of uh, takes takes the lead at the mention of of going through people's houses. Uh, that is uh, a, a favorite game. Um, and Theo, you just kind of start just phasing through the wall of each building, just walking through, never knowing what you're going to find inside. Sometimes it's kind of funny the things that people get up to when they think that no one else can see them. Sometimes it's a little gross. Every now and then it's scary, but most of the time it's fun. Um, and as you, uh, the both of you follow, try and follow keeping up with Theo, you sort of um, move through houses on one side of the street and just when it seems like you're getting closer to the northern end of town, Theo and Celestina, you both start to feel this creeping cold sense of dread just in the pit of your stomach. And, and Theo, this is a, a feeling that, that you are, are familiar with. And to you, it indicates that maybe this is as far north as you're willing to go right now. Cross the street, go through some other people's houses. Um, yeah, I maybe... love other people's stuff. Did you want to try and knock anything over while you go? No, I want to see if there's anything to like, I can't eat stuff, but sometimes I put my hand in, in the food. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so as, as you go th uh, through these houses, um, you all smell a fresh baked pie oh. of some kind. Hell yeah. I'm and Theo, up that pie. You see it just sitting <laughs> right on the middle of a table, steaming and hot, uh, freshly made. What would you like to do to it? I'm gonna destroy this pie. <laughs> okay, uh, give me a Because I can't roll. feel heat, so I just kind of want to like take the top where it's like peaked up into like a little nice little coiled roll and just go like. <laughs> give me a and watch it ooze out the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. let me. I think let's I, smush some pie. Yeah, let's smush some pie. <laughs> All right, is my spirit euphemism? roll is a, a like D8 plus one. Is it a plus one? It is when you are oh, trying to interact with the physical world. Physical yeah. world. You're so, good at this. D plus one. I'm a monster. <laughs> I had a seven. 
Okay, and you do get your wild die as well. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I'm the worst at this. I'll take the seven. Seven's pretty good. Uh, so <laughs> just kind of looking at the pie and casting a glance back over your shoulder at your companions, you you smile to yourself a little and just sort of press your hand against the top of the pie and you see and feel the crust flatten out and break beneath your hand as the uh, goopy berry inside start to just splurt out a little bit onto the table. And you hear from in the back behind a, a curtain that leads further back into the house, you hear a woman's voice call out Carlton you better not be messing with that pie <laughs> uh, apart from that though and apart from the the cold feeling and the pit of your stomach that you got and you as well Celestina moving towards the northern end of town you don't see anything out of the ordinary no other ghosts Theo uh, no one else uh, that that matches the description of the uh, the man that these two say they're looking for just seems like the town just going about its normal business. And without much to report other than that, you head back towards the general store. Except all of a sudden, once again, whoop, this wave of energy comes rushing through the town from the northern end of it, surging through all of you. You as well, Midas, back in the general store and you feel yourself sort of staggered back. You feel a pull to the north and you hear a strain of distant, pleasant music. What is this? What is this? Is okay. this what happened earlier, right? I, uh, does that happen normally, Theo? Have you had that happen before? No, it's kind of new. Okay, so I'm not the overly religious uh, person, but obviously there's uh, 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 things beyond the uh, uh, tangible world. Do you not think this could be some sort of like next place to move on to calling out to us? This e idea. E what, like Black Heaven? Yes. Like Heaven. I don't know if I like the way you answered that. Well, you, it, it could also be hell, like you just say, or purgatory, depending you know, on I'm not going life. to hell. I mean, does it, does it? Do you like see Theo like descends into existential dread for a <laughs> second and just be like, am I going to hell? <laughs> yes, Buster out of character. Um, uh, yeah, does it hurt us? Or, I mean, not like obviously hurt, but is, is it make us uncomfortable when that it's happens? It's intense. It's almost like um, the sensation you get when you fall into water and you just almost, but not quite, do a belly flop. Um, there is a, a feeling of expectant tension and, and, and uh, this expectation of pain that never comes. It's just an intense sensation followed by a pull to the north, but it doesn't hurt per se. I don't like that feeling. Midas, back at the general store, you uh, look up to hear uh, hoofbeats, galloping hoofbeats coming down the road from the north, uh, from the south. And before you can, you even have a moment to react, you see the figure of Mama Lou on horseback riding side saddle, um, but the horse just goes galloping straight through the middle of town, past the general store and up the road to the north and out of sight. Mom. Damn it. <sighs> um, the other three of you, having not found uh, anything really of note, would you return to the general store? Uh, I yeah, I think so, so, yes. Okay, so uh, you all head back to the general store and meet up with Midas. Here, Mama, okay, Mama Lou came by, but- What, where? She, she headed right past me and, and, and started heading to the north of town. We she, should she, follow, I, yes. I, I completely agree. Okay, let's follow, yes. Okay. Um, to head that way. Yeah, Theo. Um, yeah. Mama Lou is one of our our really close friends. Uh, she's she's uh, she kind of knows about this sort of stuff. And uh, she does? if yeah, um, if anyone knows about it, it's going to be Mama Lou uh, or Nightlinger, I guess. But I kind of trust is. Mama Lou a little bit more, <laughs> to be honest. Like but Linger. Uh, I think that we should go and try and follow after our friend 
uh, there might be something that she knows that we don't. Also, this thing emanating from the north, like, I, I, I don't like it. If, if we can make it stop, that might help us in some way. Yes. Now, you don't have to come with us. I, I understand you don't want to go north, but I'd appreciate you being there. Maybe it's what holds us here. Yeah? Maybe. Well, Maybe I it's what I... pulled us here. Maybe, yes. I guess I could go north if if y'all are going. Oh, yeah, yes. I, I think we all are, yeah. We go together as friends. Okay. Yeah. So you all decide to head up the road to the north end of town? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Theo, despite your uh, your feelings, you decide you're going to stick with these people. <laughs> um, and you follow them out of the general store and start walking towards the northern end of town. Although the closer you get, the more and more you feel like you don't want to go this way, yeah. Theo. However... As you all start heading that way, you see the horse come back down the road from the north. Mama Lou now uh, still sitting side saddle on the on the on the horse. Her her small elderly body just folded up in a in a, a serene and calm position as the horse sort of trots down the main street. And she gets to where you all are standing and puts a hand on the neck of the horse, and then in one fluid motion just sort of slides off of the horse. And to no one in particular, the small elderly woman just announces in the middle of the street, I think that it's time to pray now, and I will pray over here. And she just walks with her small shuffling gait over to an alleyway just, um, just off the side of the main road, not too far from where you are, and stands in the relative shadows of it and just sort of looks pointedly in your general direction. I think uh, we okay. should go to yeah. Ali. Yes, yeah. okay. We go to Ali. Okay. So you all drift over there and, and you see Mama Lou just smile slightly. To answer your question, I can't see you, but I can sense you, I believe, and I sense that you've a new acquaintance. Wow, now she's very good. <laughs> Theo, we, we, we told you she was good. All of you, I'm sure that you're talking right now, possibly <laughs> excitedly, but I ask you <laughs> to listen for just a moment. You're very fortunate that you were able to get Leduc's attention. We were preparing to leave. Something is wrong here in Iron Spring, and something powerful resides in the cemetery. I get a most curious feeling, both dark and hungry and malevolent, but also golden and soft and musical. I feel that the answer to your predicament is there, perhaps. Oh. But I also sense that you cannot leave, at least not now. Is this true? Are you trapped within the confines of this town permanently? Uh, oh, I, I try to say yes. I'll try. Are you gonna, you're gonna try and just say yes, Celestina? Yeah. Give me a spirit roll. Uh, that is a five. A five is a success. So Celestina, are, are you factoring in your fatigue into that? Yes. All right, great. Celestina, you just sort of try and force the word up out of your throat and it comes out as a whispered, pained, yes. Mama Lou just pops her head up. Oh, very, very well. But I, I sense there is a, a thinning veil perhaps tied to the sun. Maybe, yes. Oh. Maybe under cover of darkness or perhaps even the witching hour. 
this veil will thin and you could make your way to the graveyard. Now, I fear there is not much that we can do for you. However, I will assemble all, all um, able and willing members of the carnival to lend you uh, a little bit of oomph, should you need it. Uh, that is the, the best I can offer, uh, shall we say, midnight at the cemetery. Someone else wants to try to say yes. Uh, I can give it a shot. Okay, it hurts my throat. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Can I Midas can I give... try to support? Oh. Yes, absolutely, Buster. How do you want to support Midas? Um, I, I will do a persuasion. Um, uh... You should use a taunt and be like, look, the kid can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pay it forward. Nice. Y'all yeah. <laughs> are going to be taunting to support for the rest of the yeah. season. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's honestly, it's not bad because I do have a pretty good to taunt. Um, uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to persuade. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll I'll be like, listen, it's it's really simple. It's so simple a kid could do it, and I'll and I'll tell you how to do it. You sure that's not a taunt? All right, all right. Give me a persuade <laughs> roll, Buster. He likes kids. That's an ace. That's an ace. So easy a dead kid could do it. Yes, yeah, so easy a dead kid could do it. Uh, that's a 14. Woo! A 14. Uh, yeah, that's a success with a couple raises. However, uh, the most you can grant Midas as one individual is a plus two. So Midas, make your spirit roll with a plus two bonus. Here we go! From the uh, persuasive shame of uh, that, Buster's words. That is a seven. A seven is a success. So uh, Midas, you uh, you go to say yes and answer Mama Lou, but before you are able to summon the energy, Christopher just sort of pipes up from next to you. I'm Christopher. <laughs> and uh, Mama Lou just stops for a moment. I'm going to take that as a yes. And hello, Christopher, mm -hmm, wherever mm -hmm. you are. So I, I do not I'll delay. Admit, I'm I'm shocked that you have the willpower to be able to talk in this. And, but he does pull out another uh, Christopher tree. I'm Definitely Christopher. Child pieces <laughs> in there. Yes, I'm sure of it now. <laughs> we will be ready. We will be waiting. Midnight at the cemetery. Until then. And Mama Lou just uh, bows slightly and then shuffles out. Uh, very elderly-like to her horse, and uh, with a a surprising amount of agility and grace, in one smooth motion, just slides up the side of it and mounts the side saddle and trots out of town to the south. Well, it seems that we have some time to uh, wait. What time is it? Like, um. Moving? It's it's hard to know. At this point, the sun is getting lower in the sky. It's probably it's moving towards the sunset hour. 11.45. Or it's 11.45. <laughs> and it's been night for yes. hours. Uh, no, uh, the sun is going down. So at this point, you have a, at least a direction and uh, uh, the, the outlines of a plan from Mama Lou. So... Is there anything that you all would like to do before midnight, or would you like to wait? And Theo, are you gonna be doing any uh, of this at all, or how are we feeling there? I, um, how far is the cemetery from town? Not too far, honestly. Just out the road a ways, um, maybe uh, three, four hundred feet uh, down the road to the bend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Theo will deposit them at the edge of town, but I don't think Theo can bring himself to go outside of town at midnight. Okay. All right. Uh, do you express that to them? Oh, uh, n no, I I'm not scared of anything. I just have things to do. What, uh, Theo, are, 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 you sure you, are you sure you don't want to come with us? I, I mean... Even if you you did die or something, this might be an opportunity to return yourself to the world of the living. 
N- no, I'm happy the way I am. Yeah, or I don't have a curfew. I don't get sleepy. Nobody tells me what to do. This Are, is good, yes. And uh, you think you won't get tired of this place? I haven't yet. How long have you been here? I don't know. Theo, when Mama Lou mentioned the graveyard, you looked like you uh, we, 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 we're not excited about the prospect. Is, is there something we need to know? I don't know if anybody likes graveyard, but... I like graveyard, yes. He's peaceful. Uh, if there's something dangerous there, we, 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 we well, might be better off knowing. I don't know if it's dangerous. It's just, um, I've never seen it, but it just, there's something big there, you know, like, mm-hmm. like a big shadow on the sun. Oh, it did these big. What? Hmm. Okay. What do you mean, Theo? Can you tell us anything more specific about it? I just don't like being there, and I don't think you should go there, and sometimes it comes out, so maybe you'll get lucky and it won't be there. That's our only chance of, of, of making it back to, to where we are, we are supposed to be. Well, we all got to do what we got to do, so. I, uh, I, I don't want to push you into doing anything you don't want to do, Theo. So I, I, uh, I respect your, your position on the matter. You are, uh, you're a bright young kid. And, uh, I think that you, uh, you know exactly what, uh, you, you need to do here. But, um, listen. I appreciate the time you took to kind of show us around your town here and, and, and help us out and help us get the attention of our friends and hopefully a way home for us. But uh, if there's anything we can do for you, you just got to let us know. Just don't get got. Yes. Yeah. This is story of my life. And as you all are standing there speaking, once again, that wave of energy just surges through each of you. And Theo, in your gut, you feel this familiar sensation almost. It's it's strange, this, this pull, but something about it reminds you of the feeling of the town of Iron Spring, the, the, the comfort, the familiarity, the, the happiness, or, or as much of it as you've been able to gather from your time here beyond the veil of living. And it's as though the town itself is pleading with you for your help. That is the sensation that you get as the feeling subsides and the music just twangs in your head and still you feel that plead, that desperation slowly, much more slowly leaving you. All right, but I'm just going to look. Oh! Okay. Okay. All right, good. That's fine. All right. Now, if there's nothing else that you all want to do before midnight, Theo, you might know a trick to pass the time that you do sometimes when you get bored or when the nights are particularly long and cold and dark. So is there anything else that you want to do? Uh, Sometimes I pretend like I can shoot. And that usually passes the time real fast. Oh. uh, I don't know why. I just like to. No mind this. You don't want to do this. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I'm open to anything that could pass the time. Okay. Right. Theo, how is it that you pretend to shoot? What does it look like when you do that? I don't think that 
Well, Theo's never had a gun while um, being a ghost or anything and doesn't remember anything from before being a ghost. But there's something... There's something very natural to it, to the idea of lining up shots and things like that. I wonder if I ever had a slingshot when I was... Probably not. I feel like I would have been buried with it. I don't know. Always been good at skipping stones. Ooh. Well, have you ever fired a real gun before? I mean, not since I died. Um, I, Do I have my all of my weapons on me? You do. Um, I'm going to take the gun out of my left holster and I'll give it a, I'll give it a little spin um, and spin it so that the handle is then facing uh, Theo. And I'll go, here. Uh, okay. I'm going to pick it up. Theo, you pick up the gun and something about the way it fits into your palm and the heft of it in your hand just feels comfortable and familiar to you. Now, I was uh, actually a little younger than you when I first started uh, uh, shooting things, so uh, I figure now's as good a time as any to learn. If you want, I'd be happy to teach you. The friend that we were looking for, uh, I was teaching him how to shoot, too. Don't tell different. Yo, you okay? (laughs) When you're looking to pass the time, there's really only one target that's worth aiming for, and that's the sun. Easy to line up the shot to that one. Wherever it is in the sky, you just find it and imagine that you're shooting it straight through the center, but now you don't have to imagine. Now you actually have Buster's gun. Now I can shoot. I've got a gun. All right. Uh, Do you want to take a shot, Theo? I've got a gun. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to take a shot. All right, Theo, give me a shooting roll, and don't forget to roll your wild die with that. Yeah, time for me to shoot that shot. (laughs) Ooh, D8. Right. Yeah, Theo has a D8. And That's nice. only a three and a two, though. You're one short of a success. Would you like to uh, use a curious ticket to reroll? Nah, I don't think that Theo... Sh- uh, I don't think that Theo knows that they know how to shoot. Okay. And so they're really just excited that they didn't blow their own face off. <laughs> so, Theo, you kind of lift the gun up and point it at the sun, but at the at the last minute, um, you get distracted by uh, the sound of uh, a donkey just braying off in the distance. And you sort of look over looking to see if there's any trouble to get into as the gun discharges up into the sky and the bullet goes off out of sight. All of a sudden, things change. And the world just speeds up rapidly around all of you. People moving with increasing speed, moving around you, going about their business as though you are standing still and the world is moving about you as the sun moves across the sky and goes down under the edge of the horizon. The moon rises high as the town grows silent and a thick fog billows in in a fast forwarded speed from all angles of the town filling iron spring with a thick impenetrable mist and suddenly it is night and you are all alone on the streets of iron spring i don't know how i feel about what just happened well yeah uh, it's real hard to miss the sun uh, yes yes Yeah, well, I think you scared it away there with that shot. Yeah. The night feels much colder than the relatively comfortable light of the day, and you all feel a cold trickle of fear just moving its icy fingers down your insides. Okay, okay. It's just one night. We can do this. See what time it is, and... See when we need to get over to the cemetery. There's nothing to worry about. M- M- Mama Lou wouldn't leave without us. She would never do that. Um, yes. I will check my pocket watch to see if it 
has if it registers the time at all. You have a pocket watch? I do have a pocket watch. You pull out your ghostly pocket watch, Buster, oh <laughs> and okay. check the hands and see that they are both pointed straight up towards the 12 o'clock hour. It is midnight, the witching hour in the town of Iron Spring. Okay, well, that's ominous, uh, but uh, <laughs> let's go to uh, the cemetery. Yes, yes. All right. So you all approach the northern end of the town road. And as you get to the area just past the edge of the buildings, you feel that force kind of slow you down as you try and move past it, but it doesn't stop you entirely. It's like moving through thick mud until finally you're on the other side of it and on the path out of town, heading towards the darkness of the cemetery around the bend in the road up ahead. Okay. Well, one obstacle down. Okay. Uh, Midas, feeling like things are about to get a little strange, fumbles in his pocket and pulls out a, a, a little vial and uncorks it and just downs it really quick and takes right. a, uh, and, and uh, drinks a, a quick uh, shot of liquid courage. A shot of liquid courage. Um, is that different than just straight up grain alcohol? Uh, yes, it is. It is a shot that steals the nerves and adds plus two to fear checks for half an hour. Oh, this is a weird science uh, yes. elixir. All right. Um, it so it doesn't explode. What roll do you have to make for that? It is a vigor roll. So go ahead and make that vigor roll, Midas. Don't fail. Uh, I didn't, I got a four. A four is a success. Um, so what is the, the bonus again? So it's plus two to fear checks for the next 30 minutes, but the user must succeed on a smarts roll minus four to run from life-threatening situations. Okay. If I want to run, I have to encourage my brain that it's a good idea. <laughs> so essentially, Midas, you are now too brave. Yes. Um, you you <laughs> quaff this uh, this small vial of liquid and you feel an intense chemical heat rush through your body and somehow that chemical heat transforms inside of you into a, 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 a hot just determination and focus that lights up in your brain. Nothing, no dark of night, no, no strange unknown creature is going to keep you from your goal this evening, Midas. Well, I don't think we should be worried about being ghosts in a cemetery. Cemeteries are where ghosts are supposed to be. We are probably more capable of being here than, than we have been any other time. I mean, that is the point. Uh, you seem very uh, excited, Midas. You know what, Celestina? I am very excited. Let's go. Is your friend okay? Uh, very, probably not. I, you know, he, he never, never okay. It's one direction or another. He yeah. definitely doesn't seem okay, Theo. No, he he seems uh, like he's got a lot of bravado. Do I <laughs> do I sense that something magical has happened since Theo can't eat or drink? Um, as far as him swallowing that, yeah. Yeah, you 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 do kind of uh, feel a sort of like tingle in the air as as he does that. Uh, something that you have only felt maybe once or twice over all the time that you can remember. It, it seems like there was something strange in that liquid that he just swallowed. And wild. it is weird that he was able to swallow it. That's wild. Okay. I assure you, there's nothing wild about it. Uh, this is entirely uh, scientifically created. Uh, substances that are just there to steal the nerves and is it bring science? one forward. Is it the Aegis disc? Yes. So do you all continue to walk down the road towards the graveyard? Yeah. I think there is a lingering fear in Theo's mind that if I need to get back to town, will it take me just as long to get through the wall as it did to get out? But you're in uncharted that, territory, Theo. You hate this. <laughs> as you all start to slowly make your way down the foggy road towards the cemetery, you see as well as feel the shadows sort of lengthen around you. And Celestina, deep inside of your chest where you 
feel the dark energy come out whenever you call it. You feel it respond in kind to the night around you. There is darkness at work out here. And as you continue down the path, it's hard to see through the fog, but you turn the corner and round the bend and you see the ghostly skeletal outline of a wrought iron fence surrounding a fairly small and modest looking cemetery. Uh, in the middle of it is a ramshackle stone sarcophagus and the rest of the, not sarcophagus, uh, tomb, crypt, mm. there we go. It's a mummy, uh, a, <laughs> uh, a crypt in the middle. And then the rest of the cemetery is made up of simple stone and wooden crosses as markers for the headstones. But there is a thin iron archway over the entrance to the cemetery and perched on top of it is an orange pumpkin with a carved face of a leering grin that just stares as you make your way closer to the gates. Hey, I don't like that. It's foreboding. Does it There's nothing look? to fear in a pumpkin. Ah, pumpkins are just a traditional, and, and Midas rambles a little bit, kind of still fired up from his um, liquid courage about the history of, of Midas, pumpkins. A pumpkin is what sent us to the dead land place. You know what I mean. Have I ah. seen any carved pumpkins in town? Definitely not, Theo. This is most unusual. Yeah, it's not even is a thing. Yeah, is this like a tradition I would have seen in town like around Halloween or anything? No, uh, no actually so this is a, just a, a little weird. early in American history for yeah, uh, carved so like, pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns. Exactly, scorched. okay, okay, just checking. So like, this is like completely out of nowhere for Theo. It, it's strange, yeah. Theo Why would someone it. carve <laughs> a face into a vegetable and light it up from within? It's It's kind of creepy looking. Hate this. Yeah, it's a little unsettling. Uh, Politely, yes. Okay. As you all move closer, you can feel now a sort of constant low-level thrumming coming from somewhere within the cemetery, and you feel something inside yourselves respond in kind. It's that pulling sensation, but it seems muted right now, and you can't help but feel like as you approach the gate to the cemetery, the pumpkin's eyes, empty and flickering, seem to be following you. Uh, just to warn you, Midas and the Buster, I feel a little bit of extra power here, maybe, which usually means it's bad place. Well, that's unsettling. Yes, yes. It's also potentially helpful, but you know. <laughs> right. And as he uh, says that, he takes his sawed-off shotgun out, cracks it open, makes sure that it's loaded, and snaps it back in, and Midas pulls out his Buchanan and primes the little soldier with a match in his hand, ready to fire a ball if he has to. Okay. Why do you? Why? Why do all your blow up things look like toys? Oh. Well, that's what he is. He's they actually are toys. They, I just have found that if if I uh, do not calibrate them properly, uh, they also tend to double as explosive weapons. What uh, happens which, if kids mess with them? Uh, well, I make sure that the ones that, that are given to kids uh, do not, uh, are not calibrated to the levels that these ones okay, are. Okay, but instance, what if a kid sees you with one and then wants to touch it and stuff? Well, I, Is I, it I would, confused? I, I, would, I would never use one in this capacity in front of children. I mean, present company excluded. This seems or like a very <laughs> poorly thought through idea for Theo. Theo's just like, <laughs> Okay, I understand a gun shaped like a gun, but why is that gun shaped like a toy? It's a great you question. You do you, Midas. <laughs> Are you guys... Uh, safety is, is of the utmost concern in my inventions. You uh, only put the little children in the rope, the uh, automaton, uh, auto, whatever. I don't you... put... There are no children in Christopher. He says. <sighs> I'm Christopher. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you pass through the gates of the cemetery? Oh, yeah. I hate this. Yeah. Okay. You walk through the gates and you definitely feel the eyes of the pumpkin above 
the entrance on you as you move through, but just as you walk through the gates, you hear a wet thud from behind you, and turning rapidly, you see a pile of rotten pumpkin vegetable insides just splattered on the ground, the light inside gone dark. The pumpkin must have just rolled off the top of the gate. Okay. The fog thickens in the graveyard, and as you walk inwards, heading towards the middle, following the pull, the gentle tugging at your chest coming from somewhere within, it begins to get very, very cold, and Theo, you begin to feel a very familiar sensation. Oh. The feeling that causes you to hide in the darkest shadowy place you can when this feeling slips through the town of Iron Spring at night. You feel it come rushing up inside of you and all around you in the mist and the darkness, a chorus of low growling chuckles break out from the darkness as though there are figures around you in the fog laughing, but the sound is distorted by the mist and seems to be coming from everywhere at once. And then from further back in the graveyard, you hear a growling voice. <laughs> well, looks like the little rat in the walls finally decided to venture outside of town. And looky here, our little rat has brought friends. Up ahead, you see a figure emerging from the fog, the dark outline of what looks like a man, a black trail hat covering his face as he approaches and you hear out answering whoops and hollers from the darkness of the cemetery around you. Well, little rat, you finally found your courage, I suppose. So tell me, what can we do for you here? And he raises up his leering, evil face. And I need all of you to make a spirit roll for oh, me at a minus no. two, please. Oh. Oh. You mean a straight spirit roll? It's a fear roll, right? It is a fear roll. Straight roll. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I don't wow, like that. this is incredibly rude and I won't stand for it. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to use one of my Bene. Can you're going to use that? a Bene? Okay, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and re-roll that. Uh, you got a nine, Buster. Oh, a crit fail for Celestina. This is... I got a five. Horrifying. Five Ooh. is a success. Eight minus two. Ugh. Don't forget your wild die. Yeah. Uh, I got a five. Oh, is that with the minus two? Uh, on my wild die, I got a five. Okay, that's still it still gets the the penalty to that. So oh, that's oh, still okay. going to be a failure, but I don't think you rolled your wild die for the first roll, so you want to do one more d6 just for fairness. Sure. Good narc. Nope, still a failure. Um, cool. You can re-roll again with another it's Benny. You have no, two No, I'm not wasting this. All right, um, so that's going to be- We got 30 minutes. Absolutely yeah, you know. yeah, not. Yeah. Failure for Theo, a critical failure for Celestina. Um, so- I need both of you to roll a d20 for me. Celestina, you're going to be adding two to the result of this d20. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Uh -oh. What did you roll? 21. Oh, no. Uh, I got a 10. A 10. All right. Um, A 10 means you are shaken, uh, oh. Theo. So you just feel fear, cold, knifing through your body and you are just frozen solid with with fear for a moment. You are uh, oh. going to be a, a little bit impacted by this. We'll talk about what shaken oh. means when we get to that. Celestina. Thanks, I hate it. You rolled a 21. You develop a major phobia. 
You were one oh. off from like almost Good. dying. You were one off from getting a heart attack and dying. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Celestina. I'm sorry, we can get heart attacks in this game. Savage yeah. world. Yeah. I thought yeah. we were ghosts. I've seen it happen hey, too. Even ghosts can <laughs> suffer cardiac arrest. I um, thought we were just fun goth cowboys. Celestina, <laughs> what did you bring you me here for? <laughs> a major phobia. So, uh, do you have a strong idea of what that should be? It's present here. Oh boy. I'm uh, gonna say graveyards. Yeah. You gain a oh. major phobia around graveyards, which means as long as you are in a graveyard, you're going to suffer a minus two to essentially any action that you take. After saying earlier that you thought graveyards were peaceful. Yeah. And I know. <laughs> Not so much now, Celestina. And as this spectral figure in front of you just leers and grins awfully in your direction, you hear those growling, chuckling sounds around you in the fog, and you see the shadowy outlines of more figures in the mist now. You little rat and associates probably came here for our treasure what fell from the sky but you'll get it <laughs> over our dead bodies you not already dead boys let's show the rat and the rat's friends what we do to trespassers let's show them what the capshaw gang is made of and as these figures start to break out of the mist around you, you see the one in front of you draw dual pistols from the holsters at its side. <laughs> and folks, we are in a combat. Eek. Oh boy. Eek. I don't appreciate this. Can, <laughs> so, I, can I do something quick? Yes. I would prefer not to. <laughs> so Midas sees them being like, uh, you know, you're gonna have to deal with us and everything. He's like, ha. You all aren't scary. This is nothing. And I want to pop another uh, little pill into his mouth. <laughs> all right, and, I'll allow you to take some more drugs right before the fight, Minus. <laughs> one more quick drug? Just one more quick drug because you are not affected by this at all, essentially, almost foolhardishly. Uh, yes, I hardily. want to take a grease lightning pill real quick. All right, you're really tempted fate. Let's do it. He, he flips it into the air. Oh, with panache. <laughs> he's feeling like oh, he's feeling like like a hundred bucks, which is a lot at the time. Oh my gosh, Theo, real quick. I just pence. remembered you have the Elon edge. So what that means oh. is anytime you spend a Benny to re-roll a roll, you get to add a plus two bonus to that because oh, of your determination or your style. So because you failed that last one and you didn't know that, I'm just gonna re rewrite that last Benny into your pile. So you are oh, back to you. three now. Uh, Midas, make that vigor roll for Grease Lightning before things oh, get I made deadly. It. Hey, right. you know what's fun? What? Crit failing on your vigor roll? Sure is. <laughs> All right, Midas. <laughs> oh! You crit failed your Grease Lightning roll. Do you know what happens when you do that? I, can't I sure you're gonna do. I'm going to watch a man die tonight. I believe it means... it's the opposite of Grease Lightning. Is that right? Well, actually, it means, I think it just means I roll a, a, a on the malfunction table. It doesn't say anything particularly. It just says, Grants user the quick edge for five rounds. If she already has it, her minimum card is now an eight rather than a five. And uh, now I think I roll on that page 33 malfunction table. Okay, all right, go ahead and uh, and make that roll. Oh boy, that is a five, which is a major. Five is a uh, major malfunction. Uh, one shot devices are wasted with no effect and cause fatigue if they were swallowed. So. Instead of a rush of celerity and quickness through your body, <laughs> you instead feel this enervating effect as energy drains from your body and you gain a point of fatigue, Midas. Midas is like, please, I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I also have a trouble magnet. Yeah, I was about to do, say. You do, so you critically failed. Um, Midas, do you have any other, uh, you, you know what? I'm gonna say this, actually. Okay. Um, the concoction starts to boil and churn in your stomach and you feel your body unconsciously just retching it up 
out of you, voiding the contents of your stomach, including your fear elixir. So the effects of that have been removed, leaving only fatigue, you trouble magnet son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I am a little afraid of you now. Oh. Yeah, it's an easy and scary place. <laughs> We're gonna make you drop more than your insides, man. Starting to wonder maybe I backed the wrong horse this time. <laughs> Melistina, uh-huh. you get a nine of diamonds for your initiative card. Okay. Midas, you get a queen of hearts. That's Theo, better. you get a seven of spades, which is right in the middle. Nice. Buster, you get a jack of spades. The one who was speaking to you at first draws a jack of clubs, and I'll go ahead and deal him out his two bennies. The others, laughing from the darkness around you, get a two of diamonds. But before we do anything, would anyone like to spend a benny to redraw and try and get a higher card to go sooner? I will. I'll spend one for the rest of the gang. Wait. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh boy, I got a three of spades. You know what? I'll spend one more of my bennies. I can do better than that. There we go, queen of diamonds. Honestly, I appreciate that he's spending all these bennies now. Oh yes, it's good for us. Because like, imagine if he rolled something really crappy later and he runs out of bennies. That's it's better this way. Oh, right. Trust me. Right, y'all. Yeah, no, you're you're a (laughs) hundred percent right. So Midas, you are up first followed by the figures in the darkness, then Buster. So Midas on the ground kind of like clutches and goes, I'm not that scared though. And he wants to launch a um, Buchanan ball, uh, a powered Buchanan ball at the guy in front of him. All right. I haven't seen one of these things blow up. This is going to be incredible. He lights the little cannon on his wrist and the toy soldier plays and brings its sword down as with a poosh. A blue luminescent ball shoots out of the end of it straight towards the leering figure in the graveyard. Make your weird science roll, Midas. I got an eight. An eight with a success with a raise. So you're going to do an extra D6 of damage. So that sounds like you're going to be rolling 3D6, Midas. Uh, no, I'm reeling 4D6 because I empowered it. You empowered oh, it. All right. That's a lot. It. That's a lot. All right. So rolling 3D6 first, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And whoops. Sorry. I dropped a D6. Oh, boy. Okay. So I'm at 16, but I aced. 19 damage. 19 damage. 19 damage is a lot of damage. That is a success with a raise, with a raise, with a raise. A success with three raises. You're going to shake and deal three wounds to this figure, except I'm going to spend one of his bennies to try and soak it. Uh, So when you're dealt a wound, you can spend a benny to try and make a vigor roll to reduce that damage. Uh, he got a seven, which is one shy of a raise. I'm going to spend a curious ticket to re-roll. There's yeah, an ace on both tickets. dice. Ah! There's an ace on the wild die. There's another ah! ace on the wild die. Then a one. Uh, that is 19. So he is absolutely going to soak that, but not without cost. As you fire you, your Buchanan ball into this figure, it just widens its eyes for a moment and then steps back and seems to sort of go transparent for just a moment as the ball zings right through it. And then the figure re-solidifies. Oh, that's a fancy trick. We got a few tricks of our own though. Anything else, Midas? That's it for me. All right, uh, Midas, your shot goes wide and from around you, or well, no, right where you wanted it to, but not as impactful as you were expecting. and. From the darkness around you all, figures begin to emerge. A a man crawling on his hands, his lower body seemingly torn off in some sort of horrible accident. Innards trailing behind him as he gnashes his teeth towards you. And the figure in the hat says, get him, Mac. And Mac comes just sprinting out of the fog on his hands, heading straight for 
on his hands. Midas, that's the only way he can get around. He don't oh. got no legs, Celestina. Straight for Midas. Midas, this figure comes out of the darkness and rushes up towards you and then shoves off with its powerful arms and launches itself through the air, scrabbling desperately at you as you stagger backwards. <laughs> he is going to make a frenzied attack. I sneeze in fear. <laughs> Your fear is noted. Uh, sorry, this is one of the one of the normal gang members. Uh, so Midas- They just have black eyes, that's fine. Just okay. black eyes. Does a- <laughs> Six, meet your parry. My parry's a two. So that is a success with a raise over sure your is. parry. As he stretches his arms out, his long claw-like nails slashing towards you, you feel his hit sink home. Uh, that, oh, rolled off the table. Oh no, that's an ace. Eight, 12, <laughs> 13 damage. Stop it. What is your okay. toughness? My toughness is seven. That'll be a hit with the raise. You'd be shaken and take one wound unless you soak. Okay, I'm gonna soak. So okay. I will use a Benny. And make your vigor roll. Ooh, God, um, can I get a curious ticket? A curious ticket to re-roll, go for it. I only got a three. Uh, oh, that's a four, but I have fatigue. So I'm gonna use a, another Benny. Another Benny, you have one remaining, Midas. Ooh, I aced. Okay, so I got a seven. A seven is a success. So you are able to soak the wound and you are not shaken. As it stretches out for, for you, you just see it going for your throat, but Christopher jumps up and drives his body into the middle of the thing's stomach and Mac goes spiraling off to the side, hitting the ground with a thump. However, from behind the rest of you, coming up behind Buster and Theo, a figure clears its throat and spinning back over your shoulder, you see a man with a bandana over his face and he says, hey, rat, wanna see something interesting? And he pulls the bandana off and you hear the slick dry sound of scabs and flesh coming uh... with it as he peels off the bottom of his face as well, leaving teeth and rotten flesh oh. revealed. Uh, this is going to be an intimidation roll against both of you. This is incredibly rude. <laughs> oh yeah, the Capshaw gang don't mess around. Um, um, that is going to be a six. I'm gonna spend a curious ticket to re-roll. That's worse. I'll spend one of my bennies to re-roll. That's an ace. That is a 13. Would you oh. stop acing? Oh, I'm sorry, no, I cannot control that. But you both must now make a spirit roll and you're trying to meet or exceed a 13. Who's both, me? Uh, sorry, no, Theo and Buster. Oh, oh boy. Beasted. That's cocked. Don't forget your wild die. Oh boy, yeah, not, not great. Uh, it's going very poorly. <laughs> Please, I am but a baby bird. I'm gonna use a Benny. <laughs> Be kind to me. A penny, okay. A penny for uh, Buster. Do you want to try and re-roll that, Theo? You can use a curious ticket or a penny uh, if you'd like. I, I'll use, I think I have one penny left, so I'll go ahead and use that. I'm showing three, actually, because we gave you one back from earlier, and really? you gained an extra one at the beginning of the game. So if you spend Did one I... now, you would have two left, I think. Okay, so um, I'm rolling spirit. Yes, so I'll do and your wild and die. And my wild. Oh boy, that's worse. worse. That is worse. Excellent. <laughs> you want to spend a curious ticket? Uh, yeah. All right, a curious ticket Jesus. to reroll one final time. Oh no. Neat. That was almost a crit fail, but it wasn't. Nice. That is another failure. Um, yeah. Buster, what did you roll? Rip. The highest I got was a seven. Okay, that is a success with a raise against both of you, which is going to activate creative combat. <gasps> cool. So, Just use I got all my good stuff. a 10, a setback. The target suffers a setback of some sort. She might fall off a ledge, lose the confidence of her minions, take a rash but foolish action, or simply lose her next action as she attempts to recover. I am going to say, um, Theo, are you still holding Buster's gun? I sure am. You drop it immediately as terror overtakes your body. You knew you shouldn't have come here, and now you fear that you might actually really 
be gone for coming here, and the gun just slips out of your trembling hand. Likewise, Buster, you two are overcome with fear, and your shotgun just rattles out of your fingertips and collapses to the ground, sca scattering off into the darkness of the graveyard. Not too far, but out of sight. Okay. Uh, didn't like that, did you? Celestina. No, nobody likes that. <laughs> uh, from up <laughs> nobody on Nobody liked that. Of the, of the mausoleum up ahead, you hear a whistling sound and you see a man poke his head around from the cross up on top of the mausoleum and raises both arms, which just end in handless stumps. Yet still, somehow, in one hand, there is a floating stick of dynamite and in the other, a floating match. And without the hand to guide them, the two come together and the match ignites the stick of dynamite and he raises his eyebrows perversely as he throws the dynamite directly towards your feet, Celestina. He... This is just rude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did not move, and he has marksman, which is lucky, because he only rolled a three, but with that plus one, it's a four. Celestina, the stick of dynamite comes thumping to the ground right by your feet, and then with a... Oh my god. With a pow! It sort of goes off like a dud. It's <laughs> only four damage. Oh, no. What these, is your toughness? These no do anything for me. My toughness is like a, yeah, it's a seven. It makes a small, loud explosion, but that's about it. And the figure up on top of the mausoleum says, well, damn it. That one's rough. Good thing I got plenty more. Oh, do you? This good to know. Thank you. And then you hear the sound of crashing footfalls from out in the the graveyard as a black, dark, and shadowy figure comes streaking right past you. You catch just a glimpse of a bullet hole drilled straight through the middle of its forehead before the light glints off its pistol in the darkness as he double taps a shot directly at Celestina. Uh. He is going to make a shooting roll. That is a failure. I'll spend a curious ticket to reroll. No. That is still a failure. I'll spend one of my bennies to reroll. No. I'll spend my last penny to reroll that because this is just trash. Wow. This is trash. That's cocked. A five. A five is a hit, finally. And it only took me everything. Now you hear the gun go off and see the shot coming towards you, Celestina. And I'll spend a curious ticket to reroll that damage. No. Nine damage. What is your e toughness? Seven. You feel something ripping past your shoulder, tearing open the cloth on the side of it, just barely missing, digging itself into your flesh. But you are shaken, Celestina, e as you stagger backwards. All right. I think we got these folks right where we want them, boss. I, I don't deserve right. this. I'm a good person. I pay my taxes. <laughs> you're only that 13. How do you pay taxes? Buster, you are up next, followed by the grinning leader of this gang. Um, okay. Uh, I would like to use our hollow resonance to lower the uh, die types of this boss guy. Okay. All right, so you, Buster, in the midst of everything that is going on, you see the situation spooling out in front of you. You see things going poorly, and you feel this vibrating energy start building up inside of you, the remnants of the hollow note. And as you open your mouth, this deep, toneless sound just fills the air around you, and you see the figure in front of you stagger back, clutching its head and crying out in some sort of pained expression as he seems racked with pain and his die types are completely reduced across the board down from a d8 to a d6 yes. you have weakened the leader of this gang buster yeah and used the hollow note excellent what else would you like to do because that one's free oh great um then uh uh so i i, I received a setback um, Gun, you dropped your shotgun. Dropped my shotgun. Okay. And lost it in the darkness. Great. Okay. 
I'll look at the guy in front of me who just did that, and I'll go, uh, well, I done dropped my shotgun. Would you look at that? I guess I'll have to shoot you with this then, and I'm going to take a shot. You pull out your other pistol yeah. and aim it at which one? The the scabby bandana guy. Oh, the, the one behind you, and you fire at him. Give yeah. me a shooting roll, Buster. Bandana's McScaberson. Uh, that's a five. What's his name? Yeah, a five is, is a bandana. success. Roll damage for your gun. Oh, I could do way better than that. Can I have a curious ticket? A curious ticket Please? to re-roll. There is one curious ticket remaining. It's just boy. a six. Hey, y'all, remember when I used all of the curious tickets to continuously fail? Oh, that's <laughs> fine. Hey, what I think you just used all... one. It was incredible. Uh, I can remember, truly. Pretty useless that roles. is a eight. An eight is a success. One shy of a raise, you fire your shot into the center of mass of this grinning, scabbed-faced uh, person behind you, and he staggers back, clutching his insides, looking up kind of almost in shock at you, as though surprised he can be injured at all, and pulls his hands off of his abdomen, and you see a trickle of black blood run out of a small hole. And though he seems upset, he is still up. Ew. Huh, I see I've got your attention now. Okay. Five more where that came from. All right. Um, is that it for you, Buster? That's it for me. Next up is the leader of the gang, but I am actually going to have him go on hold as he still tries to shake off the ringing sound in his ears, so I will flip his card over and wait. Next up is going to be Celestina yes. and then Theo. Uh, so that guy who threw some dynamite at me, uh, first of all, Vika is going to try to intimidate him, like do a test essentially by like kind of flying over and flapping her wings at okay. him. Um, so what are you going to use to test? What skill? You said intimidation on Vika's part? Yeah. Make the roll. Okay. That's, make, double make sure. Yes. Vika comes squawking down out of the foggy night and lashes her claws and flaps her wings in the face of the one on top of the mausoleum. That's a four. This will be opposed. Do you want to keep it? Uh, yeah. Uh, how many curious tickets do we have? One. Yeah, I'll keep it. All right. Hmm. He gets a six. As the yeah. bird comes flying down out of the sky, the creature on top of the mausoleum just looks up and then goes somewhat insubstantial as Vika just rockets right through its head and then it whips its eyes back around towards you, Celestina. That your bird? It motions indicating with its handless arms. I don't know what you talk about. I uh, think I'll eat it. No. Uh, I would like to um, hold my hand out and have it burst into flame and smile at this guy and just, you know, throw some fire near that dynamite he's got on him. All right. Uh, oh, okay. Interesting call. Mm. So you're going to cast um, Elemental Manipulation and try and hurl a bolt of fire at him. Yes, indeed. Give this me a spellcasting roll. All right. That's one. That's a four. Yep. A four is a success. Yeah, so you yeah. you feel the dark energy surging up from within you and you summon a ball of flame in your hand and then cocking an eyebrow at the man up on top of the mausoleum, you hurl it directly at him, hoping yes. it will ignite the stash of dynamite that he has up there. Um, will you roll? I believe it just does D6 damage. Yes. So roll for damage. I aced it. Okay. Off to a good start. I Aced it again. Double aced it. This is not looking good for Homestar Runner. 
15, 15 damage. 15 damage. Celestina, you hurl a ball of flame up on top of the roof and it strikes this man right in the middle of his body and immediately he ignites his ghostly form sizzling and popping as the fire spreads all over him. And as he beats at himself desperately trying to put it out, you see the fire race down his legs towards the burlap sack right next to him on top of the mausoleum. And as he looks down, down at it with amazement and shock dawning on his face. He looks up towards you, Celestina, and says, oh, shit, and then just <laughs> blows up. <laughs> the top of the mausoleum is covered in a ball of flame, and you feel the concussive blast of the dynamite oh. go bursting out towards you as you are showered with the ectoplasmic remains of the person who was on top of the mausoleum. Oh, this is not what I want out of this. Oh. <laughs> Anything else, Celestina, or is that quite enough for you? Um, that's enough for now, I suppose. Okay, uh, now question. Um, has anyone forgotten to unshake? Yes. Okay, Celestina, can I get a spirit roll from you really quickly? At the oh beginning goodness. of your turn, if you're shaken, you have to try and unshake yes. before you can act. I always forget this thing. I wasn't I shaken, right? Six. I was just... Uh... I don't... I don't think you were shaken, no. Yeah. Uh, you got a six? You unshake successfully, so all Spirit. of that can have happened. Well done. Uh -huh. um, next up is Theo. Theo, just like I was like, like I Celestina need to unshake. Did. Yeah, yeah. You should unshake. So that is a spirit roll. Uh, okay. You the spirit roll, and you're gonna roll your wild die as well. All you need is a success. Uh, I got an eight and a five. You, you Ooh, succeed. I get to with flying colors. You could keep rolling, but there's no exceptional result you can get to unshake. Well, you just, just unshake. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. 13. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Lucky 13. Now you're understanding the joy of the aces. Gosh, if only this would do it when it mattered. <laughs> Neo, <laughs> you see though. everything happening around you, and you are overcome by the fear and the dark feelings from these figures in the graveyard, but then... You see Celestina throw a ball of flame up at one of them. You see him catch a light and you see him explode and vanish. And suddenly it dawns on you that these things might be able to be defeated. You might not be completely powerless here. And that knowledge allows you to shake off the pall of fear. And as you do, you feel something else sort of swelling up inside of yourself and you stand up straighter, not quite sure what's going on as the figure in the hat with the ghostly expression looks up at all of you. Wait a minute, rat. No, no, it can't be you. You ain't no rat, you, you're. And Theo, your body begins to lengthen and change. And in the span of just a few seconds, your age increases until you have grown and developed and matured into someone who appears to be in their early 20s. And as golden light starts to radiate out around you, a circular impression begins to form itself on the lapel of your shirt, shining and finally resolving into the badge of a sheriff. And yeah. in your hand, in your Sheriff other hand, you. a golden rod begins to extend itself and form into a shining shotgun that seems to fit directly into the palm of your hand. And Theo, suddenly you remember your loyalty to this town comes from your sense of duty as its protector. Though you had retreated to your childlike state, finally facing your fear here in the graveyard has reminded you who you are, the Sheriff of Iron Spring. And Theo, that revelation brings with it the Champion Edge. You now Ooh. get a plus two to all damage dealt against supernaturally evil creatures. And I'll tell you, the Capshaw Gang Ooh. is definitely them. And as the figure sees you change before his eyes, no. No, it's the sheriff! And you hear the figures all around you begin to shriek and wail, and you see the missing hands, the bullet hole through the head, the severed body, 
and you realize, Theo, these are all the wounds you dealt to this gang. Hell and you yeah. look over at the leader, Claybrook, as he stares you in the face, all right? You put me down in the earth once, but I took you down as well. This time, it's only one of us going. And he pulls his pistols up and he's going to attempt to interrupt your action. So he was on hold. He's gonna okay. make an agility roll and then you are going to resist with agility. Okay. If you if he beats your roll, he's going to go before you. I have a d6, okay. So go ahead and make your roll with your wild die. Wait, don't you roll first? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, yes. I'm, I'm not sorry. looking at that, no worries, I didn't see it. I rolled a four. Um, so that is what you are trying to beat. Now I will look at your roll. Uh, my second, my wild roll was a five. It was a five. So he pulls the guns out, but suddenly, Theo, you find yourself possessed of a confidence and ability that had long been gone from your world, and it has returned. And the shotgun just sings in your hand. What would you like to do? Yeah, I like to believe that, like, Theo gets taller and then there's like this long like red braid that like cascades in the wind and like a long like leather coat and then <laughs> nice. like takes this like this silver uh the silver and gold uh shotgun and like props it against the arm and is just like looks down the barrels like bang baby <laughs> All right. Let's shoot him. As your leather duster flaps in the wind, let's get a shooting roll, Theo. Now, with a shotgun, yeah. you get a plus two to your shooting rolls because okay. it is hard to miss with a shotgun. So I got a D8 plus two. That is correct. Better not miss this, or that's going to not seem like a very cool thing. <laughs> okay, but don't forget you also get your wild die because that's a three. Oof. And that's a two. Oh, come on. Okay. You've got one Benny and one, or sorry, two Bennies and one curious ticket remaining. You Let's do. not do a disservice yeah, to this cinematic a, moment. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me do a Benny. A Benny to re roll it. So an eight and. Uh, an I'm gonna eight. Go, I'm going to go with the eight is a success with a raise, Theo. Nice. So will you roll damage for me? You get an extra D6 for your raise. So that is four D6 damage Ooh, plus two four. from your champion edge. And four. damage also aces. So if D6. any of those sixes are sixes. Okay, so four D6 plus two is what you yes. said? 19. Uh, oh, you also does one of those aced. explode? Yeah. Yep. So that's 19 <laughs> plus. Yes, yes! <laughs> so 22. 20, 22. Theo, describe how your shining shotgun annihilates the leader of the Capshaw gang. It happens almost in slow motion where you can hear the click, and then the recoil as it just like, kadoom out of both barrels and just like, like a lightning bolt punches through the chest, both lungs. And as it just shoots through his form, you see just the exit wound blow out the back of his body, sending ethereal ectoplasmic bursts shooting out of his torso. And as he starts to shake in place, he says, no. No! No, Agnes! Not again, Sheriff! And then explodes in a burst of goo, just blasting through the graveyard. And with his death, a dark wave goes out and strikes the bodies of all of the rest of the Capshaw gang as they shake and writhe in pain. One by one, they pop like overfilled ectoplasm balloons, showers of snot-like material just raining down on all of you as one by one, they burst in the graveyard until all of you are left standing here alone. Well, nice shooting, kid. Yes, this was very good. Could we have this, whatever discussion we have, not in this place? <laughs> well, 
Well, I, I thought you liked. Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I think I work that back. I don't like them anymore. The the upsetting and the dead bodies. Nobody like this. Not not in place. Not here. <laughs> oh, but These are ugly but, stones. But look, look over here. It's like there's a little skull in here. Hi, Celestina. Oh, yes. How are you? It's normally skull funny, but not here. It's just very, very Really? Upsetting. Yes, Yo. Bus yes, Buster. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, um, stand three. there what? and watch Buster do a puppet show with a skull that he found <laughs> on the ground. You know, random skulls littered through cemeteries. It's a uh, hazard of, of the place. Um, <laughs> That's what happens. You feel something inside of you grow peaceful and still and above you just a few feet above your head a white orb begins to just swell slowly pulsing with a gentle white light and calling you home Ooh. theo all right i guess that's my cue y'all oh well it well. was very nice to meet you uh, Sheriff, I, I guess, and uh, thank you for your help. It, uh, I don't think we would have been able to do this without you. Well, I guess feelings mutual. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, you just uh, you give them a good word for us, huh? Maybe help us get out of this situation. Oh, yes. I'll see what I can do. And to find Victor. I'll keep an eye out for you. So, Theo, are you heading towards the light? Yeah, I guess it's not so scary now. With a final look back at your companions, you tip your hat, Theo, and stare upwards at the white orb, and its glow begins to intensify and brighten, filling the space of the cemetery until it's too bright for the rest of you to even see. And with one last sigh of relief, Theo vanishes. And the cemetery grows quiet. <laughs> and then up from the goo that used to be the leader of the Capshaw gang comes something pushing its way up out of the ground, moving slowly, a bit of stone, gray slate in color, pushes its way up out of the earth, shining just slightly with a golden hue and looking very much like just a small piece of the staircase that you all ascended oh. to leave the court of the gray. You hear the singing chimes of music in your heads as it calls out to you. I think this is it. I think this is okay. how we get out of here. Okay, let's let's try. You think uh, Victor clearly not in town, yes. He, yeah, we, we went up and down this place. Okay, I ain't seen yes. him, but. If he's not back at the carnival, then well, we'll have to go and find him, but. Yes. But All but right. we know a little bit more about where we were anyway. Maybe we can fine tune something. Maybe Midas, you can build something that that can hear the voices or whatever from here, and and maybe we can track them down somehow. Maybe. I have been kind of thinking about how things in our physical world could Midas. interact with. Midas. Okay, why, why don't you go? You have lots of thoughts. I want to get out of this goddamn graveyard right now. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Do you, do you okay, want the skull go. or not? You want me to no, bring it? No, I don't want the skull. Oh, Buster, okay. no. He, he go, go, get on the staircase. Come on, Vika. The, the glittering yeah. bit of stone calls out to you and you can feel yourself just wanting to reach out and touch it. <laughs> do you do so? As the three of you reach out for the stone piece of the staircase, a cackling sound erupts from the air all around you. Oh, <laughs> it looks like you have won, you three. But don't forget to look over your shoulders for me. 
And then as the laughter echoes through the night, a skeletal figure bursts out of the ground. A skeleton, mouth open, screaming in agony, starts clawing its way over towards the piece of rock on the ground. And as it goes, flesh and bone begins to build itself up on its body, muscle and tendons forming themselves as the voice changes and takes on a recognizable timber. As you see Victor's face rebuild itself onto his screaming insides as he reaches out for the stone that you all touch simultaneously and all at once with a blinding golden flash. You feel solid earth beneath your feet. And that is where we will end things tonight. Oh. Thank you all very much for sticking with us throughout this. Oh, okay, everyone, we have a couple toasts, last minute toasts, raise your drink of choice. Hardcore casual RPG would like us to toast. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care, because Wild Cards is on the air. <laughs> uh, cut them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Hardcore Casual RPG. DBG1 would like us to toast. Love the Halloween twist in the show. Thank you. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you, DBG1. There was a twist? Uh, this is twist. a little bit of one. Also, Adventures of Tony would like to give a curious ticket to the table, but since we are out of time, I will bank that for next time from Adventures of Tony to the table. And also, 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 the Mysterious Strangers in chat unlocked the third reward tier, which would have gone into effect this session. It is called Trick or Treat. And yeah. I found it very appropriate. Oh, God. Instead, we will have to celebrate Trick or Treat uh, on November the 6th. That is when people traditionally trick or treat uh, next week, <laughs> next Friday in uh, in the Weird West, not Halloween yeah. night. Um, the 12 days of Halloween. Yeah, yep. yeah, culminating on November the 6th. So we will deal with that next time. Thank you very much for all of your tips, for all of your cheers, for your subs. Thank you for being here and for spreading the word about the show. Before we go, let's all get a big round of applause for our guest, TK. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope that you Yay. have fun uh, hanging out. Grace makes me uncomfortable, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really did okay. It would be nice to me. <laughs> We're just praising your presence, really. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. But thank this you. This is my birthright. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for filling in and joining us and playing with us tonight. It was a pleasure having you at the table. I hope you had a good time with the game tonight. <laughs> I hope you all had a good time and I hope you did at home as well. Before we leave, uh, TK, would you like to tell the fine folks at home if they if they really enjoyed uh, what they saw from you tonight, where can they get more of you in the future? It's <laughs> me, uh, it's TK. I write spooky stories on the internet and if you like to read spooky stories, you can read them at my website, tkjwrites.com or you can follow me on Twitter, TK Joins the Fray. On Tuesdays, I play on the official Dungeons and Dragons Twitch channel with uh, myth Mythic Odysseys of Theros with Indoor Recess, which is the suboptimal comedy group that I'm part of with my friends. Um, mm -hmm. Tomorrow, we're having a Cheroween video game stream uh, to benefit games and online uh harassment hotline it's going to be very fun we're going to be playing a lot of truth or dare some people have to do like the pocky one chip challenge i'm going to drink mayo um and, oh and we have like roll 20 game giveaways um from uh from uh free league publishing and uh hunters entertainment so nice. oh, cool that sounds like, like a lot of fun yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely check that out if you're if you're in need of some more uh, a Cheroween entertainment. Um, also, on the note of giveaways and fun stuff like that, I believe that we have a a, a pinnacle code to give away uh, right now. Should we do that? Do we have the ability to do that right now? Yes. John. But we gotta yes. do it now. We have we to do it now. We told people to stay in chat. <laughs> Tis part of Halloween. Um. Uh, yes, the winner is oh, Dantos roll, please. 80. Hey! Oh, Dantos 80! Thank you! Yay! 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 Yay!
Santos80 yeah. is the big winner of tonight's $25 Pinnacle gift coupon to use as you will on Pinnacle's <laughs> online store for any fine Savage Worlds product that strikes your fancy. Um, hang out in chat, Santos80. We will be sending you a message to get those details to you. Thank you all very much for joining us. We hope that if you want some more Savage Worlds action, you'll check out their Halloween online convention happening all this weekend uh you can find more information on the pinnacle uh on the pinnacle website on their uh twitter and facebook and social media threads you can follow them there you should to get all the up-to-date news on savage worlds you can also follow wild cards at wild cards rpg on your social media network of choice or follow saving throw at saving throw show at all of those fine establishments as well we have lots of new content coming down the pipeline for you guys new shows in the work new adventures to go on and next friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time, we will be continuing the journey of Nightlingers traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary and our Carney folk. What can people look forward to next on Saving Throw Dom? Wild cards. Wild hey! cards next Wild Friday cards. at 8 p.m. But hey, we are next taking Sunday. Next Sunday, New Pantheon uh, is returning with an all new show, a new cast, and a new story from GM Stephen Pope. It yes. should be a lot of fun. Uh, maybe some new God kids to get to learn and love. So check that out. Anything else before we leave? Any last words? Any uh, final bits last of words. Halloween wisdom? I will say go out if you live in the United States, go out and vote. Uh, it is not too late to go out and vote. Drop your ballot off if you have an absentee ballot uh, or uh, go to your nearest voting center and go vote. It's very important. Vote like you're trying to help somebody else out. Um, <laughs> and wear a mask. It's running out. Wear a mask so and plan, do it. Make sure you know yeah. where to go and make sure you follow all of the instructions. I don't know where you are, but uh, sometimes uh, the ballot instructions can be a little tricky. So double check them just yeah. like we had to and um, make sure that you, uh, you make sure your and, signature and matches you. the signature that's on your driver's license. Uh, <laughs> that's one thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. Do do all Wear that stuff mask. and go go vote. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, that's it's super important. So thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, wear your masks when you do that. And thank you for watching Saving Throw. And yeah, we are off uh, for voting voting day. Uh, no no Salt Bay uh, that day, but we'll be back with Tales from Salt Bay the week after that with the We're final part of the We're taking voting day cards. off. Yeah, like everyone should. Really, it should be a national holiday, but uh, we're actually, we can actually do that because mm. rules don't matter to us. Um, so <laughs> yeah. that's our, our final own... bit of Halloween wisdom. Wear a mask, whether it's rubber or uh, cloth and face covering, and make sure that you vote. And folks, rubber. without further oh, ado, like Halloween, got it. We will leave you <laughs> with some spoopy finger guns. Boo 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 boo! Some spiders. <laughs>